Jackson is now having one of the biggest sales of the year. It's 20% off all men's chain stacks. Head to jackson.com. When it comes to chains, I only wear Jackson. What's up, everybody? This your boy, Rampage Jackson. We got Bear up in the house with a special guest, Kane Velasquez. Thank you for coming, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. That's special, man. The Dude. most special guest we could get. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is our first time meeting each other, though, ain't it? I don't think I... I we I, met in a uh, couple of fights before. Oh, we did? Yeah. Um, have you ever fought Congo? Jay Congo, yes. Yeah. Did I, did I meet you at that fight? Might have. Okay, uh, yeah. That was in Germany. Uh, no, no, okay. So I didn't meet you at that one. I met you at one fight. Uh, I, um, one of the fights in the, in the back room. Mm. I, remember, I, remember, I remember meeting you no, uh, okay. there, yes. Yeah, my memory, my memory's been been bad after all these fights. I don't know if it's the fights or other stuff, but my memory's been bad. But I know I always liked your fighting style. I always uh, was a big fan. Still, I always loved still, your like, fighting style, man. I was always, uh, you know, grew up watching, watching you and... and Something that that got me interested in, you know, in this whole thing. Oh, and, for real? and you were you were one of the those people that you know that that brought it, man, and fucking made me want to you know pursue this. Oh, this what's up, man. I, I like I liked how um you were like a big guy, big heavyweight, but you can you just keep going. You can always go. Like you never got tired. I was like, how is he doing <laughs> the that? Best gas tank. Yeah. Like, what, what was your workout like that when you was when you was like, man, you never uh, got tired. You're like you just go full full a hundred percent the whole time. Yeah, no, um, I don't think it was necessarily like the workout or, or anything, man. It just, I just kind of had it and like, I would just kind of push myself here, you know, and like, tell her, like, like, tell, like I didn't have any more, yeah. you know, and, and whether it be working out or in the fight, like when I'd feel the other person kind of start like dying off, you know, and then it would kind of like, I would just kind of keep going and keep going until like, I would, like I would just fall. It's like a mental you know? switch, huh? Yeah, yeah, just That's what's up. just put it all out there, man. And uh, yeah, I was, I was, I think I was just blessed to like to be able to do that. But I would just try to like try to break people in that way. Yeah, you know. Yeah, That's what's up. Man. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that if I ever get my old ass back in there. The cardio game's unmatched over here. It's is cardio a mental game more than it is just training, or is it a little bit of both? It, it, it's I, I think it's everything combined. Like uh, I coach a lot now and it's like, it's being able to be relaxed, like in, in what you're doing, you know? And that's, and that's what, that's, that's in practice. That's in the fight game where you have like millions of people watching, you know, being able to be, to do everything you're doing relaxed. Um, Obviously relax, re relaxing when, when you're like throwing your punches, when you're throwing your kicks, when you're trying to wrestle, breathing through all that. Um, Relax breathing, not just like, no, like, you know, controlling your breathing. Yeah. Um, and and just the, the connection of here and, you know, and, and the heart, like, controlling this, where, you know, controlling the body uh, through all that. So relaxation and, and the whole chaos of it all. Yeah, you, you train with DC, right? Yeah. Real talk, you be beating his ass, don't you? No. And then Jim, come on, you come on, you can you can tell us. Both no, man, um, dude, like some, uh, um, we had some battles in there, and some days, you know, I'd get the best, the better of them, you know, and some days he would, and that's what made us, that's what pushed us to like to to where you know, yeah, where we got to, because you you thought one day like yes, I got it, you know, like it's it's it, like mm -hmm. the next day, and then he'd be like, nope, he'd be like, you know, he'd, he'd It'd be like one up uh, every practice. Yeah, you're both um, great fighters, man. Mm -hmm. you're both great. He's a tough wrestler too, huh? Yeah, tough wrestler, tough competitor. You know, tough dude in general. Um, didn't like losing and would come back stronger. You know, like again, like it, in one day, it'd be like it'd be something different, mm -hmm. and it would it'd be a hard battle. But uh, no, I I knew as soon as he came into the gym, like just just a wrestler, I knew building him, like. I knew where, where where his 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 end game would be, you know. I know where, where it would be. Let me uh, let me just like give let me try to help this dude like as much as I can, and we and we both can you know can can get something great out of it, mm. and we did, you know, uh, like just 
doing what we did as far as like training and stuff and like beating each other's ass like every day, like that was the best, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, is it is it true that he moved uh, he moved down to two hundred five so he didn't have to compete against you? Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, just because we were both in the gym and we were so close that uh, you know there was no point in us like like really bringing that to the gym. There's no point in us fighting each other. If he can make two hundred five, and and he did, you know, and, wow. And then when I when I stopped fighting for that time, like he moved up to heavyweight, you know, and and he did his thing there. Real talk, so, now, you know, I can't say much about people, but I ain't body shaming nobody because I I let myself go for years. But when I heard he was going to two hundred five, like, oh, okay, he's going to he's going to look different. He's going to get, you know, he's going to. <laughs> he looked the same. <laughs> I was like, how did he do that? How did he go from that way to 205 and look the same? I don't know. Well, dude, like, I, I can't speak on that either because I because like I didn't have the best body either. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, so we can so like so you know how black folks can say nigga, you know what I'm saying? Fat folks can can talk shit about other fat folks. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But he, he you know what I'm saying? He he was never like out of shape fat, you know what I'm saying? I, I let myself go. I got like humpity. Yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? So I could say a little something. But I was like, okay, I want to see him with some abs and yes, everything. Yes, yes. Same. No, nah, DC was, uh, his body, man, he's like, yeah, and the way that it was shaped, the, it, it was shaped how it was shaped, right? But <laughs> he was solid, was dude. He was like, <laughs> everywhere, was <laughs> everywhere was solid. Like, that's just who, <laughs> how, how would you describe DC shape? You, like, looking at a picture, you wouldn't, well... And fighting is different, man. Like yeah. it's not like the movies. Yeah, you know, it ain't like cut up. And yeah. some some is really cut up. It's like okay, like nah, this dude, this dude's not gonna last. Like yeah. Yeah. you know, but if somebody has a little bit of fat on them, and you know, they're like thick in you know certain places. You're just like okay, like this guy has something. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, because you joined uh, AKA, what's your relationship like? How did you meet Javier? And and you know, mm -hmm. obviously, when people look at AKA, they see you know your belt on the wall, Khabib, Luke, DC. I mean, that's the place of champions. Mm -hmm. Like, how did that even start that relationship? How did that even start? Um, I was at um, Arizona State Wrestling, and um, my my coach at the time, uh, Tom Ortiz from from Arizona State. Um, I told him, hey man, I want to start fighting after this. Like, after I'm done with this, I wanna I wanna do this. And um he knew some people out in San Jose. So he knew um Dwayne Zinkin, who who was like the manager at the time, uh, when I went out there. And then uh he knew he knew Crazy Bob Cook a little bit and he knew um Javier Mendez. And I, I went out there like even though I was still in college, I went out there for like a couple of days. To, to see how I liked it, you know, see how I like the transition. I've never done anything where I threw punches or anything like that, but um, I was very interested in it. And I went, I went out there for a couple of days, and no, man, the first, like, little sparring session, like, it, it was light sparring, but I knew, like, okay, like, this is cool. I like this. Um, this is what I want. Like, I wanted to do something a little more than wrestling. Like, I wanted to, you know, like, mix it up a little bit more. Did you win state back in back in your home state? I did. Where, where are you from? So I was born out in uh, California. I was born in the Bay Area. Um, so I was born in Salinas, um, and I always had a tie like to there. But I, I grew up in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, yeah, two time state champion, and then uh, took second once in my my, my sophomore year. Wow. So uh, yeah, man, wrestling for me was was the best. I loved it. Yeah. You know, I learned so much from it. Like, it got me to, like, all these different places. And, you know, it it, it made me get a degree. Like, I wouldn't have gotten yeah. one if it wasn't for, for, for wrestling. Like, I went to school to wrestle. What, what kind know? of degree did you get? Uh, education. You are, for um, teaching, you, you thought you were going to be a coach? You wanted to be a coach? I wanted to be a coach, yeah. Well, again, I, I went to school. My my motivation was, was to play sports. My motivation mm -hmm. was, was to wrestle. Like, school for me wasn't... It didn't interest me like at all, you know. It wasn't for me, and um, but I did it because of 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 sports. What what was the feeling like in 2015? I think it was you, it was Luke and DC, right? You mm -hmm. guys all had the belt at the same time, so yeah. that gym must have just been on fire, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, just kind of like a dream come true, you know that the guys that that came in, you know, uh, to one place, like like all like. We all fulfilled our dreams of of the sport, mm -hmm. right? Of the sport of that of the of, the, of our dreams of the, at that time, you know. And we all helped each other do it. Um, and we saw each other when the first time we we all came into the gym mm -hmm. to like 
to how we were progressing, you know, to all of a sudden made, made a big jump to, you know, to, to being a champion. And were you yeah. guys all homies and friends? Were you guys hanging out every day? Like what, how, how do that many champions survive in one gym? Cause that, that for sure is a lot of ego, right? Well, um, <laughs> no, well, dude, like, um, no, like DC and Luke have this like, relationship, man. They're like brothers. Like, they are like brothers where they'll, they'll get at each other and they'll talk shit to each other. Like they don't care, you know, with each other. Like they, there's so much love there that they'll tell, each, they'll tell each other to fuck off or they'll even like, you know, get at it, you know, like they'll, they'll throw down. Like that's just the way that they are. And me, um, I'm just kind of the one just watching, you know, like just <laughs> laughing at uh, just at um, how these guys are. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. So for me, man, I just did my job. Like I went in, like everything was 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 for me. Here, like mentally, like you know, like whatever I needed to do, I needed to go in and like figure out myself. You know, mm. like really, I guess, kind of break myself down in order to to know what I, what I'm about. You know, and and I love that. I love going in and battling every day, and. You know, just kind of going until the wheels like falling off. You know, like every day. Like you love training, huh? I love hell yeah. I hate that shit. You hate Dude, training? Just, I hate it. Just loved it, man. But enough where I would fucking just sweat and like, and then my body would just break down. Like it would just cramp up, and it was like sounds like horrible. It's, like it's like it's done, you know. But I, it's so fulfilling. Like I put everything I did into this, you know. Like I did as much as I could, and like. Like, I squeezed as much out as I could, you know? And for me, like, to go to that extreme, like, I love that. I used to love it. I used to feel like I used to love it when I first started off. Then I lost my love. I got a couple injuries, then I just lost my okay. love for it, I think. Because you got to keep going, right? When you got to keep in, going. Yeah. Even yeah, and the injuries, kind of like, you just have to make do with what you have. Yeah, I can, yeah. Tell, you, I can tell you got a real strong mind, real positive mind. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. And that's real important in this sport. You know, my, my, I, I like to think that my mind is strong in some areas because I listen to him what he said about the cardio. Because you know, I I used to think like that too when I was young because I used to fight a ten minute round mm -hmm. back in, in, in Japan. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have to relax and stuff like that. But he has a, a real strong mind. Yeah, I mean, even even watching practices and watching you go till you know the wheels fall off, like you say, I think the whole world knows that. Mm -hmm. What in terms of like the training though, right? Because obviously that gym is just all champions, like. Are you guys going full sparring? Did you guys have like a method to the madness that was able to produce three champions like that? Like, I don't think mm -hmm. I've heard of a gym like that at that time, you know, and, and like Luke and, and DC, are they like really going after like, who's getting the best out of those two guys? Like what's that whole dynamic like? Um, I mean, I, I think it starts with the, uh, with the, with like a recipe, you know, uh, of the gym. Like you got to have certain things to, like number one, like the obviously the person coming in has has to want to do it. Like the fighter has to come in, like mentally be strong, mentally want to be there every day and put the time in. And obviously, like his heart has to be in there. Like he has mm. to love like what he does. And then talent, like has to be has to be some kind of talent there. Or you make do with what you have. You know, like you don't got to be so talented, but you like you you can find a path to like to win. Right mm -hmm. to be dominant, and then the people around you. Um, for me, man, it was um, and, and a lot of people in there was Javier Mendez. Like, as soon as I trained with him, I was like, this dude knows, he knows his shit. Like, he knows all his stuff. Like, I'm attaching myself to him. Like, I know with me not even knowing much of the sport, I knew that he knew everything. Like, mm. he knew it all. He knew the striking game, even though he didn't know like the wrestling jujitsu. Like. Technically and how, and he really can teach it to you, but he knew like like what it was, and he knew um, what was dominant, you know, without without necessarily like, teaching it, like. But he would, but but so he so for me it was like he knew everything, he knows everything, like, and he's he's uh, he's proved that you know like over time. Um, so having the people around you. You know, when DC came in, then our, our wrestling went up as as a gym as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the wrestling went up. Um, at the time, we had uh, Dave Camarillo for a while and, uh, you know, great jujitsu and, you know, Mike Swick, uh, Josh Thompson. Um, 
uh, so many, you know, uh, just so many great guys in there. Like when I went in, when I went in, it's just just so many stars of the sport. And where Khabib as well, right? Khabib as oh, well. Yeah, Khabib came later. Guy. Yeah, Khabib as well, dude. How he, like, how is he as a person? Because he blocked me on Instagram, and I ain't never know him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How is, how, is he cool? What's he's up? cool, man. He, Why he blocked he me, is. man? He's, he's very, uh, <laughs> he's a very smart individual. Um, he knows like who he is. He knows like whatever you know. Like he just, I feel like he, he's very content in like who he is and what he is, and and he has a very strong mind. And his relationship with the higher being, with God, whatever you know, whatever you want to call it, like it's no, that's number one, and. Like that pushes him, and 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 a lot of his 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 guys to come in, like pushes them to, you know, to have this up here and just be like not not being scared of anything. Like whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen because the higher is is making the road for me. I understand, right? Because if I was super religious, I'd block me too. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do to him? I didn't do nothing to him. No, you did something to no, Khabib. I never did anything to him. I never, I didn't even really know him and stuff, right? And then uh, um, I think after he beat Conor McGregor, I would try to go to his Instagram and stuff. I couldn't see him. Then, then I found out block. I'm like, I never even met this guy. Okay, I don't know. But yeah, I understand. Man, if, he's I don't su- know. if he's super religious, I understand. Because sometimes I'll be posting some crazy memes about okay. Congo and all the different stuff. Maybe he just, he don't want to see that junk on his feet. Yeah. Okay. Maybe he's, he's very, yeah, he's very much there. And a lot of his guys that he brings, like, they're all, they're all. He brings yeah, guys to the gym still? He brings a lot of guys to the gym. Yeah, we have a lot of guys from from Dagestan and, and Russia really? that come in. Um, like like now, like a lot of guys come in and kind of follow uh, in the footsteps. Um, um, Usman from, uh, from, from there as well is, is now there. You know, he's getting ready for his fight uh, in, in October. Um, so all those guys, man, they're just very strong mentality and like just strong physically, like. On another level, like where you wouldn't even like it's it's just crazy what everybody brings, like every every part of the world, like everybody brings something a little different. And these guys bring that good really really good wrestling and they're just tough everywhere, tough in the striking, mm. very strong. Um but I think just uh just the gym, I mean, it takes a commitment, you know, like people have to be in there, you know, constantly doing something, constantly Thriving for something, and having the people around you to like to to get you there. Yeah, like Javier Mendez. You know, the time when when Bob Cook was there, like he helped out a lot as well. Um, he uh, Bob Cook has always been like the number one corner guy. Yeah, because um, his voice is very like like high pitched, so you could fucking hear him from across the room. <laughs> so really, like I want Bob in my corner because like when he talks, I'm gonna hear him. You know, I might may not hear yeah. anybody else, but yeah. I'm gonna hear him for sure because his voice is is gonna travel. You know, and That's important. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, do you guys actually listen to your corner guys? Like, I always see people screaming during the fight. You guys actually even listen Sometimes to them? If you hear them, yeah. if you can hear them, and it's like it's connecting, cool. Sometimes you're just doing your thing and you're not even like worried about, you know, like yeah. you've already practiced what you need to practice. Like, you, you're doing what you have to and it's all working, or maybe it's not and you're just not really there. Yeah. Like, have right? you ever had like your corner man telling you some stuff like, I don't want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> No, I haven't. Um, dude, when I fought in Mexico, um, I went there in like two weeks. Like two weeks, no, like I thought, okay, I'll be like, I, I've been there. I've been to Mexico City enough, you know, like where I'm like, okay, the altitude never really messed with me, but I've never like competed there. So I went there two weeks before the fight and fuck, I went into the corner. People were talking to me and I'm like, get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> like, I can't hear you. Like, I'm just trying to breathe right now. Like, I don't know what's going on, you know? Bro, like, I was watching that fight. I knew exactly I was, what it was. I saw it. I was like, yeah, it's the altitude. I said, he ooh. probably didn't go there uh, long enough. Yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a nice little lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it really it played that big of a deal. Oh, like, man, it ooh, sucks. It was. In oh, what man. way, though? Like, are you losing breath? Or do you not get your breath they're as just fast? No, there's just no breath at all. And it's just like uh, I was, like, in a different place mentally, like, like I couldn't even hear them talk to me. I was just like, get out of my like, like whatever. I don't even, I don't even care, you know, right now, you know. Like I'm, I'm somewhere else. I'm trying to like, I don't even like. There's no, there's you nothing. Know, there. You're not getting enough oxygen. The air is thinner. There's nothing there to like to bring in. <laughs> yeah. um, it's crazy. Yeah, you, just, man. you just can't. You can't catch that uh, breath. Have, back. have you ever been at high altitude before? Yeah, like, but I haven't fought. At high have altitude. you ever walked up a flight of stairs at high altitude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you get, you get, you get like. 
You get like winded and yeah, stuff. Winded, yeah. And then like even with that, like your like your body doesn't perform how it's supposed to. So like the power is not there. You know, all, yeah. the, all that shit like taken yeah. away and you're like, come on. And it's not yeah. doing it. Um, dude, no, I, mean, then I just remember that. It. I just remember afterwards, like uh, in the locker room afterwards, man, I, I got like the chills and I was just shaking. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, yeah. it was, yeah, man, it was. I knew was exactly what it was as soon as I saw yeah. it because you normally have that like, great cardio. <laughs> and I saw, I said, I knew yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know it was that, but I do know that you have insane cardio. But now that all makes sense, I'm like, okay, where's the gas tank on that fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's makes why sense. fighters go. That's why we used to always go to Big Bear and yeah. stuff like that. When yes. I when I fought in Colorado, I went there. I did my whole camp there. How long? I was there training for like six or eight weeks. And it really it helps you. I didn't of, have no problem. I was in yeah. the best. I was yeah. in the best shape of my life. I, I was so when I fought John Jones, I was overly confident. I, I never been. I've never lost a fight been in that good of a shape before mm-hmm. in my life. I just like, oh man, this kid don't got a chance. I'm in mm-hmm. shape. I feel good. I, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was like close to like injury free. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm gonna overcome it. So mm-hmm. I know exactly how you felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a thing of like, okay, like. Never assume, you know, like, yeah, like I, I was like, man, I'm, I'm good. Like, no matter what, like I've been there and I thought I knew it and I didn't. And it's a thing of like, okay, you really don't, you know, you really don't know it all. Like it's another lesson learned, like kind of thing. Yeah. So. In terms of like Khabib's camp, like all these guys seem to have insane wrestling and they're mm-hmm. moving into the UFC in numbers, right? Like there's yeah. like so many high skilled fighters that are like, you know, they're full packaged MMA fighters. They have wrestling, they have striking, they have ground game. What is going on in Dagestan? Like, is it, how is it just breeding so many fighters right now? Just wrestling at a young age, man. Like bears, um, wrestling bears at young ages. Wrestling bears, yeah, wrestling whatever. I don't know if everybody if everybody does that, like wrestles bears. But <laughs> uh, I watched that that video with Khabib when he was younger wrestling, and like the bear knows how to wrestle, you know. And it's like if you have like a partner like that just to like <laughs> fuck around with and wrestle, it's like you're gonna get better, you know. And, and then yeah. I. At a young age, too, man, you just keep doing it where, damn, like, yeah, like, you can control somebody, you can take somebody down, like, like, like chain wrestling, like, even like the first, the first move doesn't work, like a first takedown attempt doesn't work, then you chain wrestle, then you like, you do like a combination would be like, like in boxing, Mm. you had that in wrestling, and that's, it's like, that's a whole other level of stuff, man, you just, so you just work in that, you're like from a young age, all the way to you know to you get older, and all the tech. It's not even it's not even like strength, but it's like it's like technique creates the strength that you need, you know, in in those type of positions. Um, and you know how to use your body against like the other person, where you you'll get them tired, you know, you'll you'll make them carry your weight, and and do all that stuff where it gets them tired, it breaks them down. Um, so it makes your your job a lot lot easier, but you you are having to do like you know some some work and stuff. Is um, Brock Lesnar is that the biggest guy you ever fought? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brock, guy. yeah. Well, he, Bigfoot, but Brock was. Oh, you, you fought Bigfoot too. I fought Bigfoot as well, but Brock was very uh, you know big upper body, like just fuck, just a monster. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, just looking at him like in person, just like a monster, like. Um, so, I mean, that was a crazy experience. Um, but I, I knew what I had with that. Like I was so good at getting up from the bottom and that whole, that whole camp, like in general was, was Daniel Cormier. And then we had another uh, wrestler there from uh, Missouri, um, Mark Ellis, who, who was an NCAA champ. And we would start the rounds and I'd be on my back like 16 ounce gloves gear and everything and and they'd be on like um you know like pass guard everything like just on me like pinning me and you know that's how we start the round like and i would just get up get up get up and then uh you know as soon as i got up and got away back down and those two guys were coming on me and so i knew hey, like yo <laughs> <laughs> so i knew it was Man. just like all right like it takes me down like it's okay like i'm gonna get up you know um and you know, we'll do we'll do it on the feed and yeah, yeah. And do you have to work with him uh, with the pro wrestling? You have to work with Brock. I worked with him. Yes, I did. <laughs> Is I that did. awkward that you fought somebody in real life? <laughs> now you got to wrestle. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess. You know, like I don't know. Like 
He's a little scarred up, you know? <laughs> like It's not like it was just like we, we did the thing and, you know, and he, it was all good. Like, <laughs> he has something for life, you know, on his face. And I'm, I don't know if anybody, like, tells him about it or puts it in his face, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, but, he's a great wrestler, too, though, huh? He's amazing. Like, yeah, he's a great Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, man. He plays that. Yeah, dude, he fucking, he's, he's the real deal. Like, he's legit. Yeah. He's fucking. Why didn't it work on you? What? His oh, wrestling. you mean like, oh, oh I was talking about pro wrestling, but no, yeah, yeah. wrestling as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the wrestling as well, just getting, like getting up from bottom, man. Like. He prepared. Like, yeah. Like you, you take somebody down yeah. and they're able to just to keep getting away. It's like, there's only so much you can do. Like, so there's only so, so many takedowns you can do until you're like, okay, this is not worth it anymore because you just, because they're just going to get up. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of work to like come in and like, and, and, and do a takedown, especially yeah. his too, where like, you know, like blast doubles or like doubles on the cage where it's a lot of strength. It's not really, uh, not to say like a lot of technique, but it's a lot of strength. And then somebody gets up right away. It's like, oh fuck, that's a, that was a lot of work for him to what? try to take me down and me just to get up. Was he stronger than Bigfoot? He was stronger as far as like in the clinch. Like he had me up against the fence once and I'm like, okay, I, I'm not getting out of this. Like, like I'm gonna wait to see what he does because I can't move. You know, like I'm stuck out here. Like I'm stuck. I'm not gonna waste your energy. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I'm stuck. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything. I even put my foot like you know the within the can between the canvas and and the the fence. Yeah. Like I shoved my foot in there, like to you know try to stop this. And no, he lifted me up. You know, he finally like lifted my legs up, took me down. But yeah, yeah. So he was strong in that sense, and then. Uh, when I fought Bigfoot, DC fought Bigfoot a couple it was a couple years or so before that b- b- before I fought him, um, and he didn't tell me much. He just told me like he was slow. Like so I'm like okay, so I take Bigfoot down. Well, well, we knew we knew right away that he kicked. Like his first thing was he just kicked right away. So I took you know took the leg, uh, took him down, and then he hit me from the bottom and it was like hard. Oh. He was from, he was on the bottom. He was on the, on his back and he hit me. And I'm like, holy shit, this dude is hard. <laughs> and then we get done with the fight. And then I tell DC, I'm like, dude, he hit me from the bottom ones and it hit me pretty hard. And he's like, yes. And he's like, I didn't want to tell you that. And he does. <laughs> he hits very hard. So, so, so I just fucking, you know, DC just. Yeah, yeah man. I mean, man. I, I've, seen, I've seen Brock like fly around like the pro wrestling, like WWE style. I've seen him fly around the ring. And like that dude's a big dude, right? So I can't imagine him when he's actually trying to fight someone. I mean, I, I just that's like some super freak power. Like he's yeah, big. He's, he's big. like two of you guys put together, kind of. Big dude. Know, like, yeah, he moves really fast. He's like just wide very and very powerful. Like uh, if he really, if he really got a little more comfortable with mixing it up, you know, on the striking, yeah, like and and strike really well, like learn, like learn how to use his power and stuff. He would, he would do some stuff. He would, he would, he would do, he would like kill some people. <laughs> I mean, between him and Francis, you fought both. Yes. Like who do you, who were you more, uh, not fearful, but who did you have to have like a better strategy going into? I mean, you obviously have DC there to help with wrestling, but both yeah. of these guys are ginormous monsters. I would say, well, with Francis, like I was like, okay, I know I, if I get a leg on him, I'm going to take him down, mm-hmm. but he hits so hard everywhere, you know? It's so hard everywhere, um, and I would say he's not as he's not as uh, as precise with the striking. Yeah. So he needs, so he, he can be a little wild and hit you somewhere, you know. And just all that power, man, like it's done. Like like you know, I, I've worked out with some people that like really big, really strong, and they'll just touch me, and it's like holy shit, like that's a lot. That's a lot of power to deal with. How do you think he's um, going to do against Tyson Fury? Man, I think he'll surprise a lot of people. I think he's quick, but I I think Tyson Fury has seen a lot of quick, you know, like yeah, his he, his defense is you know, fucking legit, one of the best, like 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 as a heavyweight. But uh, Francis trained with Mike Tyson, uh, yeah. yes, yes, Scary. training with yeah. Mike Tyson, so he's Looks getting smooth. some good stuff, as, you know, and he's training with a lot of good people. Where he's, I feel like. He's he's only getting better because he, he he is so young. He he hasn't been in the sport for like really that long, yeah. um, and then especially just boxing, like and then getting um, that type of attention, that type of of coaching from you know really top 
I mean, the best, you know, like he's only going to get better. I think he will surprise people. Um, will he do enough? Will he grow enough between, you know, the times that he's, that he's done it, like it's coming in up. the time, At you the know, next month it's coming up. Like, has he grown enough to, to do something like, like maybe, you know, uh, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking like, uh, he has a puncher's chance, Oh yeah. but Tyson Fear is one, one of the best, you know, I've grown to become a big fan of his, but yes. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see, um, Francis Ngannou fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah, for that too. Yeah, I'm, 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 to see his next boxing match. Yes, somebody that's not yeah. Tyson Fury. Like I don't know. If he should have started with Tyson Fury. No, that's, yeah, the, that's probably yeah. the greatest heavyweight boxer of all time. Right. Top top three for sure. But you but you got to go where the money at though. Yeah, that's a big that's a yes. big money fight. Oh yeah. I, I'm look at me. I'm a has been. I, somebody offered me a fight with Tyson Fury. I take it right now. With what? Yeah, you probably beat him. I don't know, man. I, I have a hard time with big, big, tall people like that. I have a hard time with long arms and stuff like that. Because I like to fight in close. I like to be okay. in close in a dog fight. Mm -hmm. how, how would you fight Tyson if you had to fight him? I would fight him in close, and I would use even some uh, some clinch wrestling. Really? So yeah. That's illegal, that's yeah. illegal though. You go, that's illegal in boxing. You can't do that. Not not like not like plunging like like that, but I, I mean, you can do underhooks, you know, get in close. It uh, kind of like what, what Ruiz does oh, yeah. from the clinch, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. when he separate, like he'll come in the clinch and then he'll separate himself and like and throw punches there. Mm -hmm. You can even do some kind of like duck unders as well, yeah. you know, getting close duck unders and like. I like to see you in a boxing match. Do, yeah, do some yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Why, why aren't you boxing? Oh uh, man, I don't know. I'm just right now, dude. I'm just coaching and whatever comes up, you know, I'm, I'm open to, to to anything, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, spe speaking of coaching, I think we have a video. There's this uh, AK wrestling drill went viral on the internet. It's probably one of the best okay. drills I've ever seen. I, I tried it the other day. It didn't work for me though. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this because I was trying to use it on. <laughs> I, I was trying to use it on the kids in here. So okay. why do you keep dragging this dude's leg around the, the heavy bag? <laughs> you you just you just keep dragging him around the gym. I can't figure it out. <laughs> so as well, like I'll go in and like okay, so they're striking right. Like people want to get on a bag and just strike on the bag. It's like, well, that's not real. Like you're not it's gonna, nobody's just gonna let let them like be on you or be on them, and like you can just strike. So you really got they're gonna be pushing and and pulling on you. Um, so you gotta hit and you gotta move, change position. So that's what I'm telling them and teaching them to do. Like hit, change position, use your weight, and like try to hit hard even before that. And then I just have some fun sometimes just pulling their leg, you know, trying to get them off. So then they're trying to, they're trying to like get back on the person, mm. you know, like versus like, let, like, so it's, they're not, then the person under them isn't always just being there, just being a dead fish. Got it. That uh, I would love for that to happen, but that doesn't happen. So I'm pushing them, pulling them, I'm moving them around. And then, yeah, like if they let me get their leg, I'm gonna take it, but some some guys will be like, no, they'll, they'll move their leg and move around the bag, uh, like what realistic. What are you supposed to do? You yeah. know, yeah, like that's, or that's a good drill. We used to yeah. do that. Really? Yeah, that's a good drill. I got a question. Since you're a coach, yeah. how how you feel about that oblique kick? Oblique kick. Oh, we got we got to pull that up. Oh, we got to pull that. Pull, show yeah, pull the oblique kick. Yeah, he, that guy right here. They got to rewind it. Yeah. With the knee. Yeah. Oh, I did a movie with that guy. <laughs> The guy the with the knee right here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Well, John Jones has been doing it forever. I mean, it's legal, so it's like, what do I think about it? It's legal. So why not, you, you know? You, so you do that kick? <laughs> That's what you're saying. I mean, we don't do it in practice, right? Because yeah. you, you know, fuck up your teammate. But if it's legal, yeah, then then use it. Like, uh, I think yeah. I think it's like, it's, it could be a career ending or... yes. And I wouldn't want to do yes. that to. Uh, I, I feel like all fighters, we have something in common. Like we're con we're Conrads, you know. So mm. I, I've never hated anybody I've ever fought. I disliked a few, but I've yeah. never hated anybody. I feel like we're all like Conrads, and, yeah. and I feel like if you if I injure you for life and now you can't take care of your family, I, yeah. I feel some type of way about that. That's yeah, I mean that. Uh, I say it's legal, so you use it, but not to say that that I'm a fan of it because mm. it, it is a big it is a big opportunity. It is a big like. Yeah, man, it, it can change time for somebody, you know, if, if, if landed correctly and all that stuff. So, do I, like, do 
I kind of hope like it, it gets taken away. Yeah, mm. you know. But saying that, like, if say if I'm losing a fight and I can, and I got the chance to oblique kick somebody yeah. for a belt or something, I'm like, it's either this this belt or, or, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I, I understand what you're saying, but going into a fight, I don't I don't try to really injure nobody I, bad. I think I think the I think it has too much uh, you know ne- negative consequences. If, if done correctly, and it's done correctly, like you, yeah, you're gonna take somebody's knee out, you know. So I think it should be taken out, like, but it's not. So I mean, just be aware that it can be, it can be happen to anybody, and yeah. mm-hmm. guys need to be have, you know, their knees, their knees need to be bent. If somebody does that a lot, you know, they can't be straight legged and, and expect like it's so na- it's so unnatural to train for that. I remember I was training for John. Yeah. I was trying to like, um, you know how you check a Muay Thai kick? Just yes. bring it. I was trying to, I was trying to do that, but you got to time it right. Yeah. I think that's the only way. One of my coaches said you mm-hmm. turn your leg sideways, but I don't. It's just nah. I think you, know. you just like lift your lift, yeah. your, lift your leg up, like yeah. lift your knee up, try to cast the foot and, and throw on. Yeah. You know, if if uh, if timed correctly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I think it it should be taken away. It should. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think but, it should be taken away. Yeah, but you know, yeah. I mean, in terms of kicks, though, like Luke Rockhold, I've seen him train multiple times mm-hmm. for the last couple of years here um, in Orange County, and he has like phenomenal kicking. His phenomenal yes. ground game. Yep. You know, loves to kick the mm-hmm. the heavy bag with no shirt on when girls are in the gym. <laughs> He's a big. Let's start kicking the bag all of a sudden when all the models walk in. What what what's the dynamic and and what was like the in terms of like grading scale? Like how good was he at wrestling and kicking at AK with guys okay. like you and DC there? Like I actually want to know from you who I know will keep it real because mm. Luke likes to tell some stories, but Luke is a champion. So we got to believe yeah. what he says sometimes. Luke, uh, his striking is very good. Like yeah. very good. As long as he, he doesn't get into the, um, um, like, like, like the war, you know, if he, if he uses his reach and the striking, yeah. he's very good. His kicking is good and strong. And he, he, he kicks hard. Um, Jitsu is very good, very tough. He's very torquey. Like he'll get in a position and just like he'll stay with it and just kind of. It's kind of a weird strength, like like to have. Um, and then his wrestling is like the weakest part of it mm. of what he has. Like his wrestling, like you can kind of take him down, but then when you take him down, then you got to mess with his his jujitsu. And on the stand up, like if he uses his reach well, he's very tough to deal with. He is. But then if you get him into that war into that like slugfest. You know, you bait him into that, then he's he, he he's not so good there. Mm. You know, but but him being long, kicking, long punches, very good, good on the ground, really good on the ground. Who had the best wrestling at AK? A DC for sure. Hell yeah, better than Khabib. Well, I mean, I never. I mean, with the guys that Khabib, well, Khabib went went against um um a couple guys in there and. Yeah, I mean, he would he would definitely. Uh, well, I mean, because I went with DC, so I so I know like for him, like DC was like you know DC did did the best in the wrestling, but I would say Khabib as far as for like the the, the smaller guys did did the same thing, you know? Yeah, did the same thing. Um, yeah, I would say they're they're pretty even. Um, I would think DC was more. Uh, just more, more like, like flat, not flashy, but like he had better, like it wasn't as forceful. Like he, he could be more, more finessing, you know, and you know, especially with the guys that he like, like trained against, like bit bigger guys, he'd, he'd be able to take them down, you know, mm-hmm. using finesse and stuff. But yeah, me and him, man, we, we had some wars where he would take me down and I would take him down, like, you know, did kind, you, of, kind of thing. Did you start dominating him more after um, you saw him crying in the cage after one of his fights? <laughs> no, man, dude, I had a big, like, I got so pissed off of that shit, dude. dude that was, was so soft. That was not, well, dude, okay, there's a lot. Oh, you just dude. hit a, th- you yeah, hit a you sore did, subject. Yeah, 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 my boy was crying in the cage. I'd be feeling some type oh. of way too. I'm like, man, what you doing? Made us all look bad. Man, man. okay, that was UFC's fuck up. I'm gonna say that that was UFC's fuck up for Prince. Okay, the, we're fighters of the UFC. You need to protect us. Somebody gets knocked out. Like I, like I thought he he took so much damage anyways before they they called the fight. So I, I went to uh, who's the ref? Um, I don't remember. Big who John was Big it John. I went John? to Big John. I I, t- I chewed yeah. him out. 
You know, like what like what are you doing? Um, you fucking let that go too too long. You know, and he's like, No, he's like, What? About what like whatever. But then I'm like, he's fucking like no, he's still knocked out, right? Like people think see he's walking and shit, but that doesn't mean this connection right. is here right. with it's not, it's not here. Mm. And I knew it and I saw it, and I'm like, and I don't even know who the fucking the who the doctors were to like talk to him, you know? But they put him on camera. It's like you can't just put somebody on camera who's who's just been knocked out and it's still in that way. Right. So I fucking I chewed out everybody in the fucking doctors and all that. Like, um, that was fucked up. Yeah, and I didn't then, think about that. They, he's right. They shouldn't have put him on on camera. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you get on camera. There's no way you're throwing in the flag at that point. He was well. He just wasn't. He just wasn't there, man. And the whole the whole time after that, he was just like kept asking me, you know, like what what happened? What happened? Like it was nonstop. Mm. But I knew I I knew from like him taking too much damage to how he was afterwards. Like he was he wasn't there. I knew that. Mm. And then the whole night it was like nonstop. Like what happened again? What happened? You know, mm. a couple minutes later, you know, I would tell him, and then a couple minutes later, he's like, Kane, what happened? You know, kind of thing. Mm. So it's it's he was all concussed for sure. If he kept doing that, yeah, it's all a learning curve, right? Like things are gonna happen where you're gonna learn from, and you may fuck up. Like everybody's gonna fuck up, like of something that that happened, and then next time you may you may think, oh well, let's see what this, you know, let's assess this and let. But uh, essentially, it's uh, it's protecting the fighters. Like you don't know what's going on. Like even the doctors, like. But you know, because you're this yeah. is what you're supposed to be doing, mm, right? They should, you know, they like, hey, he's like, pretty bad. Like, I wouldn't put him on, like, yeah, like, what, like, okay, learning curve, learn from the next time, kind of thing. So I had a big, yeah, I had a big old, I had a big old shit with that. Yeah, my bad. I didn't mean to. No, bring it's, but it, but you know, it it, it happens, and yeah. it's things that we got to learn from. Like, yeah. like the UFC has to learn from. You know, they're the they're the top dogs. You yeah. know, like, yeah. yeah. They're the best at what they do. But you know, I, I like to joke around and have fun. Like you know, I, I'm one of those people. If I see something that's funny, I'm, I'm going to say it. <laughs> he hit the first, the first soft spot for his dog yeah. right here, dude. Yeah, yeah. With because yeah. you know, the, I've been, sta- you know, I've been wanting to say something, but you know, I've been, I know you like, you have a good sense of humor, so I've been trying to stay away from. So I was going to ask you when we talking about Brock Lesnar wrestling mm-hmm. big guys. Asking, how many big guys did you wrestle in jail? <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> <laughs> Bad man. Oh. Well, well, for for my birthday, you know, they 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 tried to jump me, and it was just like it was just a funny. It was just, they what? You know, they was no, funny. Your friends, no, it was just like yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just my friends, you know. Like it's your birthday, like, we're gonna, you know, like even what we do in the gym is like it's somebody's birthday. Like we may, you know, dog pile and like beat him up real quick for their birthday. Can you imagine? Listen, I want to break this up though. Can I tell you? Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you imagine him going to jail right now? It's like when Mike Tyson went to jail. Back in the day, it, it's not often that a, that a, a champion MMA fighter goes to jail yeah. like that because you know that in, in jail you never been in jail, have you? Mm-hmm. In jail, there, there's like there's like showrunners, like bosses and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, shot callers. You didn't have no problems, did you? So I went in and um, it was kind of like for me, I took the opportunity to like okay. I've never been alone, like, really, for a long time, you know? I really need to be alone and just, like, take care, you know, like, whatever. Whatever, they, like... So, um, they asked me if I wanted to go in, like, public and or PC, and I mm-hmm. asked to go, you know, well, let me, go, let me go to PC and let's see what this is about, and we can go from there. And I wasn't trying to, like, step on anybody's toes or, like, you know, not not play with the program or anything like that. Like, I had no, I have no idea, like, what, uh, you know, the politics are. I got to know a little bit more, like, being in. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously I was like, I have respect for everybody and, mm-hmm. and everybody's, you know, li- like living in their, their, their world and they're, they're doing another thing. Um, but I took the opportunity to be with myself for that time and it was good and bad, but it was like mainly good, you know, like I believe like a lot of people should experience something like that. Uh, you know, like have their freedoms like taken away um to appreciate what what you have and it's like the smallest of things mm-hmm. that that we take for granted um just to have yeah man like we're we're so blessed every day and we're we're so like down on like the the dumbest things yeah. you know when shit gets taken away you realize ah oh, like i had all this i had all this i had that opportunity just to like leave when i wanted to get in my car and go go outside and 
you know, look at something like look at like to get to like a like look at nature like. Mm. See something like have the have the the be, like opportunity to go look at something like that, um, and appreciate the day. Like the day would never like each day would never be the same. Like each moment, like when you look at something like a tree or something like that, like some some so so small like that, like that one tree would never look like that ever again, except for that moment that that, that you're looking at it. You know, like yeah. it would never be the same. Like the like how the leaves are and stuff. Like it would never be the same. How the wind's blowing. Like if you want to like go into it like that deep, it would never be the same again, except for that one moment. So take the time, appreciate that that moment was for you. So like little stuff like that, man. You know, I started getting little whatever out throughout the day, like little wins. You know, whatever they were, something little, man. And I would just be like grateful for that thankful for it so it wasn't like i was like in a bad place like like no man like i'm here i'm here it doesn't matter what this changes to you know i've i've been poor i've been i've been at the top like whatever like it doesn't matter what this what i see it's it's always here and here i'm always here like and that, that's all that matters and it's it, it matters of what i make this you know, like how I feel inside is is what matters, bro. That's that's deep because um, as a father and stuff like that, I think I've like, you know, that can happen to any one of us. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what you know, everybody got respect for you, brother. Everybody, appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole, yep. MMA, all, the whole MMA community. How how did you um pass time though when you was in there? I wanted to know how, how what you do to pass time. Uh, reading, um. A lot of different books, uh, just books on, um, I wanted to look up a little bit on um, like different stuff. But there was one called like, uh, I think it was like the Lady of Gold. What was that? It was a Mexican, a Me- Mexican-American author. He was, he's, uh, he's, he's part Yaki and I'm, I'm part Yaki as well. They're uh, from, from, from Northern Mexico. Um, and just a story of, it was a story of like uh, like the Mexican Civil War and like families like somehow going through their journeys and then, and like combining like uh, like throughout this this short time and it was like losing people around you, losing your family as well, and still being grateful for being you know that that you're living like mm-hmm. you can be have everything taken away but you're you're still living and life will go on and, and you'll have appreciation for, for life and it'll be up and it'll be have its ups and downs. You're going to learn from the downs and, and appreciate the times that, that when you're, you know, when, when you're doing much better. Um, a lot of, uh, I read uh, Carlos Santana's book. It was in there. So I read it, you know, um, got some good stuff from that. And uh, um, read a, a book from St. Francis uh, of Assisi. Um, so like I wanted to see like what, like what what happened to him where he had this like epiphany or like when God came to him, you know, and he he just like, like the way he grew up, he like he had money, his parents had money and all that, and like but he knew like that wasn't shit. Like he was like, no, that's like, and he fucking told him off. He's like, yeah, this ain't shit. Like <laughs> what you guys do, you know, whatever. Like you guys have all this money, this ain't shit. And he took off all his clothes and shit. He's like, I'm not. I'm not down with that. I'm doing, you know, I'm doing something else. And he lived like just poor as hell, but he fucking just helped people. Like, you was know, a good book. Good book. Yeah, just uh, yeah, man. He just wanted to help people, and he was just like he just didn't really care. He did it all for you know, for the one. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's it's interesting to me. Like you have such a unique aura <clears throat> like you we all also know that you're this powerful world champion you're explosive you can you know do anything you want at any moment but you have such a humble balance to you but such a like in the moment presence like you're very in the moment you have a very unique aura about you like did you always have this like how are you able to control the aspect like rampage in the past has talked to us about mm-hmm. anger issues and mm-hmm. being able to control that and over the years and how he got his nickname but it seems like it, like, were you this person always, or is this like a new cane? No, I think I, well, I was always this person. Um, you just learn, right? You just learn, like, 
Growing up, man, I remember just having so much love, like, like for everyone. And that shit, I just take it for granted, you know? Mm. Um, it was just weird. It was just like, and I would almost take things just personal, you know, like, and even even to this day, like I've learned now to like not not so much, but I take things a lot like personal when it's when my heart's in the right place, and somebody does or says something where it's not it's not to like what what I was like trying to do, um, it would just take like I take things personal, you know. I take it a little bit while to like get over that. Um, so then I, you know, uh, I don't know, just. With certain people, I can be this way. Or, or now I, I've learned, like, with, the, with everyone, I can be this way and not be so attached to anybody, mm. you know? Like, like don't take it so personal. Like, like this is me. Like, cool, man. Like, I don't know you. Like, I love you. You know? I, I got love for you. Um, if you don't feel the same way about me, whatever, like, it's all good. Mm-hmm. It's all good, man. Like... I know who you are, like, or you know, or I think, you know, or I think I know, but it's all good. Um, so to, to put myself there, like with coaching, same thing, put myself there, hundred percent. But if the person doesn't give that back, or the person doesn't achieve what I think they can, or what what what's expected of them, then be okay with that too. You know, yeah, be okay, be okay with it all. Be okay with with somebody's like journey and in 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 whatever way um i think throughout like fighting and everything has made me come out of like the shell like a lot more um and knowing like fame money all that like that doesn't mean shit you know like that doesn't change a person like you're always the same person like we are always growing but you are always the same like like you can't you can't you can't lie to yourself you know, and if you do, you can only do that for so long, because mm. uh, like, like all, all all you have is this and this, and yes, you are growing, but like being your authentic self is just, just what matters. You know, what makes you happy and just just living in love. You know, mm-hmm. and and love can do anything. Love will do anything. You know, it'll it'll get you to all the places that you need to get to. Like being that, being that, like everything else is bullshit. Like jealousy, envy, all that. Like it's all made up. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's only like you know, love for somebody, some love for somebody else, love for for yourself, what you're doing, and all. Everything happens from that. All yeah. good things happen from that. Yeah. Yeah. It seems it seems like uh, you you live without an ego. It's it's interesting though because you would think that a fighter who has to you know, compete at the highest level to be a world champion would have to have the biggest ego because that's kind of where you get a little bit of your confidence from. But it seems like you have no ego. It seems like your your spirit, your mind, your body, it's all connected. It's one. It's it's very refreshing. I think it's and it's it's enlightening. I'm glad also people get to hear from you too because, you know, like Rampage said, mm-hmm. the world respects you. The world loves you. You're the people's champion. And uh, it's I, I'm really happy and honored that you're able to kind of share that and kind of go that deep with us. I think a lot of people are scared to, to go deep, but I appreciate that. Oh, thank we, you. We feel that. Yeah, well, do like the ego. It's like it's always a battle. You know, the ego is always there, and you just acknowledge like what what the ego is and what it's not. Um, when you go out there and fight, you you may have an ego and everything, but like everybody sees everything. You can't hide shit. You know, you're gonna win sometimes. You're gonna lose sometimes. You're gonna be at your worst. You know, places and everybody's gonna see it all. So it's like you can't lie. You can't like no, no, that that didn't happen. Like like, no, everybody saw your your shit. Put it all out there. So, like fighters were really like in the most vulnerable positions that that anybody can be in, you know. And we put ourselves in there forever. Like like we do that, and it's just stuff that we do is there forever. Everybody can see it. Like you can't lie. Like it's a very humbling you know, thing to go through. And like, yeah, you're at your, you're, you're on this winning streak. You're going up, up. You think you're unstoppable. Like you be like, you may think, Oh, like nothing can touch me. Mm. And then it's like, whack, like, fuck no. Boom. Mm. Like you're down. And then and it's like, Oh, like oh, I thought I was this. And it's like, no, it's not like, you know, it brings you back down. Um, and you just, yeah, I mean, you just gotta be okay with yourself. You gotta be okay with knowing that, 
whatever you do, people are going to see the best and worst of it. And it's all good. Like, I feel like fighters have learned a lot, like just from that, like, like sports in general, whatever, like the best people at that, what they do, it's the same. Everybody, everybody's going to see what you do. Mm. Every, every, everyone's going to know what you're about. Like, so it's okay. Yeah, I agree with him 100%. I, I used to feel like that when I was younger because, you know, I, I never really get sick. I never had the flu or anything. I, and, you know, I never broke a bone. And, and then the first time I broke my hand, I was like, my ego is, I just thought I was, mm. I, I've lost fights and stuff before, but I've mm. never been hurt really bad and stuff like that. And, and this time I, I didn't really have any uh, bad injuries. I got injured in, in college wrestling, but when I broke that, when I broke that bone, it was like, oh yeah, I'm not invincible. You know what I'm saying? It did help mm. me with my, it did help me with my ego. I agree with him hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, the ego respectfully is the ego what kind of made you lose the belt that first time because you competed with injury or competed thinking you were mm. invincible and you still took a fight or like, how did that happen? Yeah, I guess it was something like that, but I was more of like, man, I got to do this. You know, like there's a lot, I felt like a, like a pressure of like, there's a lot riding on this. Mm. Like I can't do certain things but I'll make it work, you know, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens like mm -hmm. with that. Like, and it was to the point where I was like, I can't, I can't really do a lot of things like, you know, in training mm -hmm. and I don't know, man. It's like, I felt like it stuff needed to happen though. Cause a lot of things opened up from that, you know, um, it was weird. It was weird. It was like, it was so fucking weird. You had something else on there. It was so <laughs> weird. It was like, I can't do much. I can't do much. You know, I was pretty bad and like physically. And I don't know like who knew, but I feel like everybody knew like in my camp, like what I was going through. And then after the fight, it was like, there's a big old, there was a big old thing with, with crazy Bob Cook and, and Javier. Well, and Bob was the one. He was like, I don't know if I, he, he thought that Javier changed the game plan. And it was like, dude, it's like you're on the we're on the same page. Like I like we couldn't do what we wanted to, you know. We just we just couldn't be done. And now that we changed the game plan, like no, dude, like I couldn't I couldn't wrestle like that, you know. For mm. this, like I was I was pretty jacked, dude. I'm trying to make it work, you know. Trying to make everyone happy. Try to do it, and it just didn't happen. And um, it kind of blew up in my face. But it was it was good to see that, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Everyone's different reaction of this where, yeah, man, it was like, okay, like, like, you don't know what it was, but you didn't know what it was before this. And even though me telling you or even somebody else telling you who knows, like, this is what it was, like, I couldn't do it. Like, you're still on, you're still stuck on, on, on what you're saying or what you thought previously. So it opened my eyes to a lot of, just a lot of different people in my, in my, uh, in my in my circle yeah it's wild when you um you got a job to do and you still got to go out there and fight and and you injured you know i've i've done that several several times and sometimes i regret it you know sometimes you, you'll win but you, you know it makes me think it made me think about you know um our ancestors that mm -hmm. did like um you know fought in the coliseum and stuff like mm -hmm. that i was thinking like what if they had to go fight injured sometimes and oh, yeah. that they they fought to the death right yeah like you gotta think of like what type of mindset mm -hmm. they'd be they'd be going in like they go into the Coliseum and they know they got these little injuries. Cause that's the yeah. only time when I really had doubts when I had like these little small injuries and it always in the back of my mind because mm -hmm. you know you gotta train around it. Yeah. Stuff like that. But, but it, it makes me it makes me um think of that. I'm like, well, you know what, my ancestors mm -hmm. they they probably had to fight to death and someone was injured and they still went out there and did it. So let me quit being a little bitch and go out there and fight. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, um, yeah. I, like we always going through with like, like some kind, some type of injury, whether it be small or like bigger. But yeah, like somebody going. I've thought about that. And somebody like back in the day going to war, like hand to hand combat. It was like they're not their best, but it's like they got to defend their, you know, they yeah. got to defend their people. Yeah. They gotta, 
they gotta do their thing, and this this is no take back. This is this is, this is for for everything. Yeah. Do you ever you know? think about weird stuff like me? I think about if I was born like what two or three hundred years before, I'd probably been one of those you know those slaves fight <laughs> like like in the movie Django. Yeah. I probably been one of what do you call them? Like Negro yeah. warriors. Okay. <laughs> do you ever think about stuff like that? Yeah, man. I, for a while, like okay, well, it was school because school wasn't my like. School was terrible with me, man. Like, what well, I just like, I don't know. I just like, I didn't see the benefit in it, yeah. like for myself, you know. Yeah. So I'd be in there just daydreaming. I wouldn't do my homework. Like, like I'm like, this is BS. Like, I don't <laughs> even know. I, I, like, whatever, you know. Yeah. Like for me, like that was just my mentality of school, man. I want to go out and just do something physically. Um, but I would always think like, yeah, man. I think I was just born at a different time. Should have been born, you know, yeah. like, at a much, uh, yeah, like, like when it was more, it was more physical stuff. Yeah, I yeah. actually, I actually believe in reincarnation now. Yeah, I do. Before Why is I that? did reincarnation, when you, when you, when because only, only the body dies. So maybe we've been here before, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is my own little crazy mind, right? So I yeah. believe back in the day, I probably was some type of warrior. Yeah, and stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did that. Already. Yeah. Yeah, we did it already. Now, yeah, yeah, we did that over time. You know, whatever we needed to do. Yeah. You know. And, in that in that space and now things are different like you still you know we're still warriors so we can still exercise that but we're just Um, not fighting to the death anymore Mm. yes i mean i feel like you guys both fought i feel like you guys both fought and left it all in the ring every time you guys fought i felt like you guys were fighting to the death well well sometimes you know (laughs) you go in there like man i read it i read a dad and lose to this guy but then i get Put in a choke and I tap out. <laughs> like I ain't dying tonight. I'm, I'm going to my after party. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting uh, fifty racks for this after party, but uh, I ain't dying tonight. Fuck yeah. that. No, I mean, like, when you look at fighters, like I, I look at fighters, obviously I'm not a professional fighter. I didn't win world championships like you guys, but I love watching and obviously I'm, you know, doing this podcast because I love MMA. So I've been in fighting and, and the MMA community for a long time. But when I look at fighters that I feel never have casted even a shadow of doubt. Like they go into every fight and you just know, they know that they're the goat. For some reason, the only fighter I can honestly say I've seen this in is like Khabib, where I feel like no matter any interview, any fight, anything I've ever seen him do, I just always feel like he knows it's impossible for him to lose. Like it's God's plan or something Mm -hmm. like in a good way, not in a bad way, but he just knows that Hey, like there's, it's impossible for me to lose because I have God as my partner, or God as my corner man, or whatever it is that he's able to psych psychologically, like align his mind with. Like, it's a mentality. Yeah. For sure. Do you feel that yeah. about him? Like, is he really the goat? Do you think he's the greatest of all time in terms of fighters? Yeah. Yeah. I think he is. Um, just how dominant he is in, in like in certain areas of, 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 uh, in fighting. Um, I think a lot of that has to go with, just the men- like like you said that the mentality, but um, a lot of it is like, hey man, it's it's out of my hands, like, you know, like like again, like God, whatever you want me to do, I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do this hundred percent, like, and if you think I should do this, then hey, all good, but I'm you know I'm gonna do what I'm doing, and hopefully you grant me this 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 win or or this victory, um, so it's almost like. It's not a lot, a lot of pressure. Like I gotta, oh, I gotta do this. I gotta, I gotta go out there and, and do this. Like, like no, man, I don't care. Like, whatever happens, like I'm ready. You know, like you said, I'm ready to die. Like for this. In, in my, in my opinion, because you know, I, 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 I fought with this a lot of time. In my own personal opinion, I, I feel like God don't care if we win or lose because He gave us free will, and and it's for us to will it. Mm-hmm. It's for us to will it. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Khabib's. I, I think Khabib, he wills it because he probably, a lot of people honest, understand what free will is and and, and, and most people don't. Yeah. So that's my opinion. That's my take on it because, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've I've talked to God and stuff about it a couple of times and, and my take on it is like, God, I don't think God care if we, because he loves us no matter what, mm-hmm. but he want us to to work hard for it and, and he want us to, to will it for ourselves. And yes. I would call Khabib the GOAT, but he blocked me. Since I'm blocked, if he if he unblocked me, I DM DM and say, yeah, you the goat. I feel like but, we have we have a messenger. Well, I'm kind of saying, be a medi- mediator here. Yeah, I'm just saying. So for right, as of now, I I give a goat status to um, John Jones. I get. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so yes. so so, but Khabib, 
you know, he 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 is the man. He is the man. I, I can't hate him on for yeah. that. He's the man. Mm-hmm. But I ain't calling nobody the goat that got me blocked on social media. <laughs> I feel like you guys should do a wrestling match, and then me and Khabib. Yeah, if you win, he he gets to unblock. Nah, he'll probably he'll probably be in a wrestling match. How old are you? Uh, me? Yeah, forty one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too old, man. He, and Khabib's like Khabib's pretty heavy right now too. What's yeah. he What's he walk around at? Oh, you know, he's more in his coaching phase, and he you know, he still works out, but he's he's probably like, like close to two hundred. Damn, what was he fighting at? Fifty five. Fifty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 50 yeah. pounds every wow watching. he loves well he loves food man he loves food you know like <laughs> what's his favorite food dude well, i don't even know dude it's not, <laughs> like like dagestani food you know i'm sure they would All cook right. it at the gym Bring no, it to the gym. no. Bro, I thought um, you were gonna say dog. I was gonna be no, like, no. no. <laughs> you said doggy style. Like, <laughs> he said doggy style. <laughs> no, doggy style. Doggy style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, when they, whenever those guys come over, they they go eat a lot of like kebabs and stuff. Oh yeah. So I don't know if that's Khabib nice. eats kebabs. I don't know if it's like uh, if it's like food from like from from their home, but. Right. He loves food, man. You know, and he's he's coaching. He he still goes out and like you know you know works out and stuff yeah. as well. Um, I think he retired too, too, too young. I understand why he retired. You know, he told a story, but yeah, like, man, yeah. too soon. Like he was just right, he's right there at the top. It's smart. It's smart to do that. And Dana White hates when people even think about doing that. Yeah, he hates yeah, it. Really, hey, man, good for him. No, good for him, man. He's doing big things. Like he's got his own amazing. League now. Yeah, he's got his own league, what, like Eagle, Eagle FC Eagles or something. Or something. Mm-hmm. Oh man, amazing for him. Like, um, so when he comes out, to AK, he tries to like do like the the whole the whole coach thing like too much, you know, like sit down on the corner and all that shit. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you know, he puts down like uh, the kicking bags to like sit on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Khabib, what are you doing, bro? You're like, do you want to work out? You're a coach now. You don't do anything. <laughs> you know, like just give him a hard time, you know. Just, does like, he ever mix it in a little bit with you? He does. He uh, With me, no. No, but uh, with the other guys, he does. Um, yeah. But I'm just like, what are you doing, man? Like. <laughs> You're, you're, you're doing the coach thing way too much. Comes in with his coffee and just drinks his coffee <laughs> in the morning. And he fucking drinks McDonald's coffee. I'm like, why are you drinking no, shit no. coffee? Him and Hob, him and Javier, dude, both of them fucking McDonald's coffee. I'm like, you guys, what are you guys? You guys I, I can never stuff. imagine could be walking in with a McDonald's cup. Yeah. So funny. Always, every morning, McDonald's cup sits down and like, and then we'll, we'll, like, we'll finally participate in practice a little bit later. But he does like the whole like coach thing for you know like on their phones like Hav Hav will watch his phones when when they're people are sparring. I'm like Hav, you want to get that phone and just throw it the fuck out of here or what? You know like what are you doing? Like he yeah. I understand Hav like I understand you you fucking you you watch this all the time you know everything like I get it, <laughs> but you're on your phone right now. Like, <laughs> No phones in front of Kane when it's training. What are you doing? Well, he, if he's coaching, like, uh, you know. Are, are you training and coaching every day? I am, yeah, yeah. Wow, still yeah. even right now to this day? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, like like training when I can. Like, I'll go in, you know, do a couple of hard days, and then when I'm like, all right, I'll take some days off. I'll do that. But I'll, I'll come in still and, uh, you know, coach, either the sparring, hold mitts, and. Um, you still spar? Yeah. Really? That's, DC, the, that's the most. That's the, that's the best. That's the yeah. best part of fucking training. DC yeah. spar with you? No, no, he hasn't came in in a while. He's you know he's really busy doing his you know his his work thing. Mm-hmm. You know, being the the commentator and also uh, he, he he does a lot of with the uh, with the wrestling uh, the, the the high school kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he's built a, a great program. Um, Alan Gilroy, um, we're just amazing amazing kids, man. Mm-hmm. Like f- freaking talented. So he's he's doing something really big with just with everything that he's doing, mm. you know. So he's 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 pretty busy, but um, I'll mix it up, man. I won't go like I won't spar hard. Like I'll like that that'll be rare, but I'll I like you know technique spar and do all that shit mm. just to move around and kind of see what people have and try to help them from you know try to just try to help people. Do like, you corner progress. in their fights as well? I yes I do, and then uh, on October seventh I'm I'm gonna corner uh, Usman. Oh as well. okay, so I'll be there for for his fight. No oh, man, it just. I have fun, man, like, you know, trying to help people, like, s- spread some knowledge in, in the fight game, mm-hmm. you know, if I can, if I can help, like, it's fun, man, it's rewarding, it's fun, like, uh, you know, you, you, it keeps you young, you know, like young kids now, you know, yeah. a little different, so. Do you miss um, it, though? Do you miss getting in there and fighting yourself? 
Uh, no, not not anymore. Like I'm, I'm, I've been able to put it away. You know, like I, I obviously like missed the time when I was when I was young and doing it, but I, f- I feel like I, you know, I I did it how I wanted, so I'm I'm good with that. Um, now I like to see it from other people's eyes, you know, like from young people like doing it now, like see, seeing it from their eyes, it's like, or their experience, like in the fight or in training, it's like when we're always, we're always going to have that light bulb go off, you know, we're always going to learn like, and we're going to learn something different to us. And the, the guys that are in training now, same thing, like you're going to see that light bulb go off and to see that is like, that's a shit right there, you know, to see that in your, like your kids, like to see that, like. That's the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In terms of like John Jones in November, he's going to fight Stipe. What do you think mm-hmm. about him moving up and, and getting that fight? Dude, I think, yeah, man, John Jones is, he's uh, unstoppable, man. That easy, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's not that easy, but it's just, he has everything, man. He, yeah, you know, like, he has everything. And he's, uh, he's, he's stronger than what he looks. And very athletic. Like I saw him fighting with DC, and there was like something where he almost fell. It was just like something small. Like he almost fell, but he kept his balance. And just to see, just to see him do that, like it was like this little, this little thing that that happened. But I'm like, just to see him do that, I was like, holy shit, that's something. That's big time. That's like big level of like, like 99 percent of people would have fallen from that, but he didn't. Yeah, you know, like like shit like that. But then like his strength, his mentality, just. Just everything combined. I was really impressed uh, when I fought John Jones because remember, like I said, I thought I was overly confident. And he, this was for the belt. I can't remember if he was champion already or not, or if the belt was vacant. I can't remember. But uh, I just thought I was going to walk through this kid. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this this is just some skinny ass kid. And yeah. uh, his skills just just on a different mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Really Deceiving almost, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's proven there, man. He's proven that over and over again. You know, and like, yeah, he's he's the complete package, like the complete great package of, mm-hmm. of what you would want, like as a fighter. But I think, I think if the uh, right heavyweight get in there, they're gonna spark him because I don't think he, I don't, it's never been tested, but I don't think he has a real strong chin because because he is so good at keeping people from hitting him. Yeah. Like whenever I got close to him, he'll poke me in the eye, I'll kick my knee back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah I've, yeah, yeah, I've never seen about land a real good uh, punch mm-hmm. on him, but I didn't really watch those. Um, those two fights with the fans say he lost was was a Guff Guffus how you say his Gustafson? name yeah. Guff yeah. fan. Yeah. How you say that name? Gustafson. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know if I say it crazy, no. but yeah. Guff fan. I know yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> and what's the other what's the, what's yeah. the other guy? Now he fought two guys that that Machida probably? No, no, no. He, he, no, uh, no. He he wrecked Machida. Uh, no, he did, no, he did, but he uh, he, no he was Machida. having a hard time uh, with Machida. At so first, that, yeah. that was good. No, it's the other guy, the um, the t- other tall guy. I can't remember. I, I can't remember his name. I have bad. Uh, I have I have a problem uh, with names. Mexican dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. He was on the tip of my tongue. You know what I'm talking about? Did yes. you see those fights? I didn't. Okay, so that's I, the same. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But I, this is what I feel. I feel like um, John was probably partying and stuff before this fight because he, you know, has you know how when you win right, like yes. that. Yeah, Reyes. Reyes. Yeah, thank you, Reyes. 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 Yes. Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he was part of partying, and he, like, unestimate those kids, and then they gave well, him tough fights. Why are he fights. parties no matter what? Before he all does. of them. I know. He, yeah. yeah, but then he, but then he probably wasn't, like, training his best, too, though, because uh, he unestimate. You, maybe, I, yeah. I don't think the party, I don't think the party hurts him. I think it helps him. I think it's part of his training camp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it yeah. all goes part of, yeah, it's part of, it's, it's what allows him to get his demons out. Everybody battles their demons <sighs> different ways. He lets it loose, and then he goes in there with no stress, no fear. Mm-hmm. I would have loved to see you fight him if he's mm-hmm. a heavyweight. I would love that would have been that an insane fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, that would have. I mean, you had some crazy fights in the UFC. Like, what was your what was the most significant fight you think the the hardest fight you ever fought? Oh, against uh, Dos Santos, really? The rematch, and then the uh, the third fight. Oh, yeah. both of them. Yeah, yeah, that was. Um, we're just going off of the loss, going into it again, and like. At the time, I mean, he, he was like he was like unstoppable, you know, like really good hands, knockout power, and you can you can take him down. Mm. So, dude, I just put myself in like a dark place for a while, and I'm just like, well, like I'm I'm giving this dude everything I got, like I, like I don't even care about finishing him. I'm gonna punish him, like like I have to, you know. So like 
Still, I went to like just to, I went to a really dark place of like whatever you want to call it, revenge. Uh, just giving them all my shit, you know, and just doing that and just like punishing them. But I, I just felt like that's what I had to do to win. Like that was the only way, mm-hmm. and, and it kind of was, you know. Even though like I, I felt like I, I dominated the fight. Um, he was always there. You know, it was yeah. always like like a like a step away to like to getting something, you know, knockout, whatever. Like he was always there. He he wouldn't just just go away, you mm-hmm. know. So so I had to. So I feel like I had to do that, and it was a lot of learning for myself, man. Because I remember going on the third round, and I was like, I'm gonna fucking faint right now. Like I'm gonna faint. Like <laughs> like I'm gonna, you were done. I'm gonna drop. And I'm just like, ah, whatever. If it happens, it happens. Just keep going. <laughs> and then if that happens, it, it's okay. Like, so uh, it just took it. Yeah, dude. It, I I just did, took everything I, I had. Like, it took everything I had to to do that. And then the third fight, man, I don't even remember. Like afterwards, like I was so jacked up. Like I don't. Your body was hurting. Uh, yeah, but more like my like my mind like. I think I talked to, uh, there was one of the, the Houston Rockets were there and like DC would tell me about this. He was like, he was like, yeah, he's like, you were talking to him afterwards, but you were just kind of like, like standing there. And I was like, huh, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that I was talking to this dude afterwards, yeah. like, like walking out of the cage. Uh, so, so it just, it took a lot out of you, you know, it's, it's a lot that, that you're giving up. That's a, it's, I mean, I just saw him and Verdum fight, like bare knuckle. Did you see that? Yes, I did. did. You see that? They fought bare knuckle fight. Oh, yeah, I heard it. I didn't watch it. It's like, yeah. I think it was Game Bread's, uh, yes. Game Bread's organization, mm-hmm. and they went and just, dude, it was, I mean, Verdum has a gash. That, I love Verdum too. I've, I've known him for years. Nicest guy, but he has just the gash yeah. to his face. I mean, dude, it just is a full out brawl. It's not even a, it's not even a fight. It's just a full brawl. Like, I don't even know what you call that. Well, I mean, did it, so, Obviously, it's its own thing, but like one to one touch, it's like it does so much damage. Like one touch, it's not you, worth it, bro. I don't think it's worth it. Whoa. Would you do it? No, hell no. If if I wouldn't do it, man, I I wouldn't do it for less than like five million. I wouldn't do it. Would you do it? DeSantos did it right. Um, uh, I don't think it's worth it for me anymore, man. To like to do any of that, you know. Um, DeSantos did it right though. He did, like he didn't get touched at all, and he was like playing that you know like not getting touched at all. And then when he had, and then it wasn't that much action like um, as far as like like clean shots or anything. It wasn't. It really wasn't. But the ones that did go in and hit, like they made a big impact, big a lot of damage. You know, like I think he only he. I feel like he only got hit like a couple a couple times. But uh, like that's all that was needed yeah. you know, to make to make all that damage. Is that is that event uh, game bread? Is it bare knuckle MMA or bare knuckle boxing? Because yeah, I M- M- MMA. It's bare knuckle MMA. MMA. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, bare knuckle MMA. Yeah. Oh, that's a little different. That's a little different. That's a little different though, because you don't got to punch like that the whole time. It's just like whatever. If you touch them, man, it's just like this shit just breaks open, you know? And and who knows how, how it's going to be with, like, if you take somebody down and, like, do some good ground and pound, you know? Like, you just touch them, like, shit just opens up. Yeah. You know? Like, especially, like, uh, you know, seasoned fighters. I mean, we, we just get touched. Like, stuff opens up. We've been, you know, doing this for so long, scar tissue and all that stuff. Um, yeah. And then just, just fucking bare knuckle hitting, you know? It, it's going to cut you. It's going to cut you. It's going to... Your eyes gonna swell, like stuff's gonna. Yeah, it's gonna react differently. And those cuts go. They're gonna be there for the rest of their life because it takes years. If for real, it takes yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> He's laughing. Oh well, yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 You gonna you gonna yeah. do that? You gonna do that for like a hundred thousand? Some people doing a hundred thousand, two hundred. So yeah, that's, that's crazy. It depends Whoa. on their their name and their brand, right? Yeah, it's gonna get yeah. scarred for yeah. life. Yeah, you will. Yeah. I mean, I think those guys, besides the money, I think they're just fighting to fight. I think they just love fighting. Mm-hmm. Maybe they need bread, but I doubt it. I, I think at that point, I think there comes a point where there's some fighters who just love fighting. They don't want to give it up. They yes. just want to fight forever. Yep. Like, I think you have a unique approach. So do you. Like, you guys are very, like, in tune with yourselves, and I feel that you guys don't have this, um, like, anything left to prove. Like, you guys are just, you kind of gave it your all. You had the belt. You, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like you're... 
it's not like you're searching for fame or fortune. It's like you guys just did it and you're good mm -hmm. with that. And you can go to the next yeah. chapter. People have a hard time moving on to that next chapter. Yeah. They can't close the book. They can't close the chapter and start something new. They just mm -hmm. live in that one moment. They want that same thrill. Don't, don't get me wrong. I still uh, enjoy fighting. I, I haven't officially retired yet. So I still enjoy it. I still, but I just don't like the training. But I, I like that um, natural high I get mm -hmm. when I win a fight, or if I knock somebody out or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't sleep. I don't, I don't even really sleep that night. Yep. Never. You, really. You know the same way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a natural high. It's, you can't get it nowhere else. Yeah. Whatever. Um, Those of you guys are staring at each other. You guys are looking in each other's eyes when you said that. Yeah. No, we fight. Yeah. Yeah. We're for, yeah. yeah. Comrades, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, the yeah. energy you get from, I don't know if it's the people or like what just happened, you know, like whatever. I get that even in, in, in doing lucha, like doing wrestling. Like, really? I do a show and like, I'm like, I'm not sleeping tonight. Like, I could, I don't know if it's the people, if it's just like the, like the, the energy you think it is? The energy route, that yeah. you just like take in or just like transferable. That's why they tell you yeah. be careful who you hang around with because energy is transferable. Yes. A lot of people, it doesn't matter your religion. That's just a fact. You know, we're all part of the same universe. We're all mm -hmm. connected. And if you hang around with people, that energy is going to rub off on you. Bro, as a, the older I get, the more I, I, I can tell. I can I can feel people's energy. And and when I used to fight in Japan, the um, energy was different there. Mm -hmm. That's the taco man. We good. Uh, the, energy, the energy was different in, in Japan, like uh, uh -huh. the crowd, right? Okay. And then when I fought in the UFC, it was a big thing about your first time fighting the UFC. You're going to have like the UFC jitters. It was a thing that I yeah. heard about. And I was like, man, I used to fight in front of 70,000 people. I ain't going to have no no jitters when I fight mm -hmm. in front of like what yeah. they have, like 20,000. I don't know. And, um, and sure enough, when I fought Marvin Eastman my first time, mm -hmm. as soon as I walked out into the arena, I felt like different energy, okay. And I had the um, UFC jitters, and mm. it, and it didn't wear off for me to the uh, second round. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's like the people yelling, like you know, they're giving you all that shit, whatever they're saying, like they're giving it to you, and whether you're feeding off it or or not at the moment, like you absorb that. And so yeah, like you said, at night that you're just like no, you're not mm -mm. all night, like you're not sleeping, yeah. like you are awake, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's 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 uh it's unique to watch you guys as like world champions, you know, who are like fighters and you guys are obviously the most elite at what you guys do, but then to be able to sit here and reflect on it is so different than the average person who just watches a fight, right? Cuz like I'm a I'm a fan, right? I get to sit here and watch you guys fight, but you guys get to talk about it mm -hmm. from the point of view of actually throwing and accepting the punches, throwing and accepting the kicks. And I don't think people ever get to have that in-depth feeling like when you walk in the ring and you have a belt you've talked about it like you walk in the ring you have a belt and the whole world knows you know light heavyweights heavyweights you guys are the tallest biggest dudes on the planet like you guys are the baddest dudes to walk the planet like if a 135er walked in here and he had a belt i'd smoke him like i ain't worried about him you know what i mean but like yeah yeah i probably would but like if you walk in here i'm like okay cool it's his room now you know, it's his mic, but like, mm. you have to have some sort of feeling that just, I mean, that feeling, I don't know. Like, how, how do you describe that feeling walking in the ring, knowing the whole world's looking at you because you have the belt? Mm -hmm. um, well, shit, man. Like when you go and, and fight, it's almost like you're, you're back at ground zero, you know, We're, like regardless if you have a belt or not, like you're, you're, you're fighting for that belt again. You know, so it's like you're almost like ground zero. You have to like put yourself, yeah, yes, you are the champion and all that. But like at that point, in time it doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter because you got to go out there and prove it, you mm. know, on that night versus this person. Whatever they bring to the table on that night, whoever's on in that moment is like, is, is what makes it, you know? So like when, really when you're going out there and fighting, like, and you have a belt, like the shit doesn't matter. Like, you got to go out there and prove it again. There's always something to prove, especially when you go out there and do something like that. There's always something to prove. It's not like you've done this and done that, and you go out and, like, like it's all good. Like, no, no, no. You still kind of, like, prove yourself. You're not, you're not as good as your, your your last fight, so. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. We have this clip of uh, Joe Rogan talking about your greatness and, uh, you know, as being one of the best champs ever, and I think everybody would say it, that you were probably one of the best champs ever and definitely one of the most ferocious, one of the most athletic but in terms of being a heavyweight fighter, we have this clip that Joe was talking about. 
think it'd be cool to watch. Tired out after the first round. Okay. So the, it's hard to say because there's never been a 265 pound version of Cain Velasquez. Okay. But Cain Velasquez, in my humble opinion, when I look at all of the different heavyweights that I've personally seen fight, Cain stands out as the best. Wow. The reason why Cain stands out as the best is because he has superhuman endurance. Yeah. And his ability to put a pace on guys, you would see these guys just wilt mm. under the pressure of him. And, I think with Kane, it, you, and this is where it gets really interesting, mm. what did him in is probably what also brought him to the top is his mental toughness because his body started breaking down. Mm. He started having all these back injuries. He needed back surgery, multiple back surgeries, shoulder surgery, knee surgery. Everything was getting fucked up. And I think it was getting fucked up because he was working through pain and because he has the ability to tolerate pain that most people don't have. Right. He's just a fucking animal, mm. but that's also probably what led to him having this insane endurance mm. is the same kind of mental toughness. I'm sure there's some genetic advantages as well because they would talk about how he would take months off and come back in and still fuck everybody up because he's just that good. But you that also could be attributed to the, the cardio uh, base the that he yeah, has from competing for many, 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 many years. I didn't know you had um, like – Back surgery, mm -hmm. wow! It's hard, yeah, it's hard to come back from that. And you fought after having back surgery. I did, yeah. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. My back was jacked up for a while. Uh, that was like the worst shit I've ever gone through. Um, that was like the one thing I was like, I don't know if I can live through this. Like, I think I like live through this. So I was getting like nerve pain all the way down my my leg, um, and then they went into like my L four L five. A spine and kind of like you know took out like some um, whatever that was hitting the nerve. Did that a couple of times and then it was like it would come back because I was still going and like training and stuff. So I had to put a, a cage on, so like a metal titanium cage to like separate all the discs inside your body. Yeah, yeah, in, the, in my lower back. And it's still there. It's still there. Yes. It's never gonna come out. You, you, it's something that you got to wear for the rest of your life. Yes. Then you always get, you always getting frisked in metal detectors. <laughs> 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 They well, gotta, no, well, not because of that. Uh, no, not because of that. Uh, like, they be doing cavity searches. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you have? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. So, I, no, like, grateful that that doesn't go off, like, when yeah. I go in. Um, so, so, so that's good. But, um, but yeah, I got, yeah, I got some metal right again there. But, it, dude, it's like night and day. Like, uh, yeah. you know, like, it, it's, it's so good. You, you see, you see, like we, what we put our bodies through, and for the rest of his life, he got to have a cage. <laughs> yeah, that, like body. he's a real life Wolverine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's crazy that like, and and the world, a lot of people don't see this, right? Like the casual MMA fan that just mm -hmm. watches because McGregor's on TV or something, and they don't know anything about fighting. They don't understand what it takes to prepare and go right. through sparring and go through training camps and go through miles and cardio and run like fasting. Like you're not even fighting right now. You're not even in camp and. You don't eat till five. You eat like one meal. I watch you in here. I could see when it's like, oh, we need to get Rampage a meal because Rampage about to turn Rampage. Yeah, and I didn't even eat yesterday because yeah. I went out. I hooked my uh, one of my good friends up with some with some with a with a girl, uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> and I had to go out and they had like a double thing. Like his the girl I hooked him up with, she got a girl. She, her friend don't like me. You okay. know, I'm not her not her type. Yeah. So it's cool. But I, I met them and I hooked them up anyway. I had to go out with them <laughs> Saturday and be like the, you know, wingman okay. with them and drink and I got drunk as hell. And the girls came back to the house and and I never eat fast food. I never eat fast food anymore. You know what I'm saying? I, I I've been losing weight. And she ordered some Dale Taco. I was like, okay. damn. And I and I and I and I ate it and then um and coach wanted to go eat a Brazilian barbecue. I said, I said, Coach, I, I got to fast today. I can't, I can't I eat anything. So he, yeah. he was so mad. So I ain't ate, I haven't ate, I didn't eat yesterday. And I and I, and I can't even eat today because yeah. I because I messed up. It's the worst thing ever, bro. We go through a whole bunch of bullshit. I mean, the fasting is good for you, though. That that yeah. like resets your mind, resets your it's, body. You you fast? You did, diet? Yeah, I've yeah. done it a little bit here and there. Yeah. It sucks, though, huh? No, man. Like, Dude, I've, um, once you get past the one day, and it's not even like, not even hard. Like it's whatever. Like it's. See, he's mental. Like, he's mentally strong, bro. I'd be complaining. Like my stomach is like, you know, talking. It's like, shh, it's okay. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> oh, I can't you know? talk to my stomach. When my stomach talks. It gets bad. <laughs> like you're fine, and then it's like, well, I started fasting a little bit because I would get in a cycle of just like. 
of being like content. You know, I'd eat. I'm like, I, like I'm hungry. Eat, or maybe I'm not even hungry. I just eat. And it's like I got a cycle of just like knowing what that feels like. You know, where I always have something in my stomach. And I was like, let me let me go to the other side. Let me see how that feels. And I did a couple of days like that. It was just with like liquids and stuff. Um, it's really so, good for you. I yeah, know yeah. that resets your mind, resets your body. Yeah. After like three, four days, it it can reset your entire kind of like immune system, but it can also reset a lot of things that are going wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah, I did a I did a five day just with liquids. Oh. And then I don't remember, but I okay. That sounds okay. Impossible. So that's, that's so Jesus did like forty one days. Okay. There's a football player, lineman that did like forty days. And then uh I don't know if you know the uh the rapper Kevin Gates. Yeah. He did like 30 days or something like that. Yeah, I heard something so, like that. <laughs> so people are doing it, man. Yeah. But maybe after five days, you probably kind of like get used to it. I did, and I was very comfortable. And then what happened to me is I uh buddy came over, we ended up smoking. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, maybe I'm a little hungry. You know, looking at like, you know, like social media, like maybe I'm a little hungry. Okay. You got the munchies, that's what I had. Five days and you broke good. the fast for some munchies. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, but I ate good, you know, I ate good, clean, like uh, grass bed beef and like some eggs. That's what you know? broke your fast with? Yeah, yeah, so I ate good. Um, but I, I did, I felt so good, like my interactions, like mm. were, were good. Mm. You know, I didn't feel like I didn't need anything. Like mm-hmm. I was, I was like hydrated and all that stuff. So I felt like I was good with what's going on in the present. The present moment, yeah. Man, it's important. With uh, with Charles and Islam coming up, how do you think that fight's going to go? You think it's going to go the same way as it did? I hope it does. You know, I hope uh, Islam does does even better. Um, obviously, you know that's that that's my dude right there, man. He's he's, he's been in the gym. Uh, you know, even Khabib was coming up, and you know, like Khabib and him ha- having some wars, and and knowing that that Islam was was right there. Um, Dude, he's just Islam is just so good everywhere, man. I've never, I've never like, I've I've only like technique sparred with him, and I've never technique sparred with somebody who, who actually like out slicks me and gets the best of me, like 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 he has. Really? Yes, like he's that good, and I'm like, holy shit, like this is this is like he he has something here. So, I know Charles is a dude that you know he he brings it, man. He, he, He's a warrior and all that, but I hope you know. I hope um, Islam does it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I um, think he will. Barry, you was talking about you not being a fighter and stuff, but I, I've been seeing you training. You getting in good shape, man. You look like a totally different person. I would say I think you should go up there and train with with, with Kane for like six weeks. Then we just throw you into like a little amateur fight, so you yeah. can be Conrad's like us. I was supposed to take that fight next week in uh in in Tijuana at Hong Kong. I was, to, I was supposed to take that fight, but they just they they booked it. Well, and you, you, in Hong Kong, yeah. were you gonna be fighting some titties? No, no, no. It was one of those things. It was just like uh, it was this guy who's three and three. He's he's from Thailand. He's a Muay Thai fighter, and he doesn't have ground game. I studied his whole thing, and you know, is he, I being, I is he being serious? Because because yeah, sometimes I some... drop way. I got I cut all the way down to one eighty. You didn't see my photo when I was eating pizza. I was two thirty seven. Loco, is he being serious? Because. Okay, yeah, because sometimes hey, he can he can have a straight face and mm-hmm. tell you anything. Okay, because he he's over here, and I'm like, you realize, like, if I was to go train with real fighters, not mm-hmm. like mess around to make Instagram content, like, yeah, you would break my jaw. Like, can you imagine me and Kane sparring right now? You, How do you think that's gonna go? But you would learn a bunch of stuff. You would learn after my to, body gets dismantled. You would learn like defense, and you know, like it's just it's just knowing knowing like what the. Uh, it's like a recognition of what's what's happening. Like, oh, I see this. Okay, let me move this way. You know, you do it so often. That yeah. You're like, okay, like I move the, my head, and then knowing how to throw a punch and knowing how to take punches. I saw you one day. You were taking punches from somebody. BJ Penn. Okay. I couldn't throw anything back. I think he broke my liver. Yeah, but you. <laughs> yeah, I think my liver was broken. He hit yeah. You with the oh, I couldn't breathe, and but, then my whole body shut down. But you don't know how to take the punches either, dude. I was hurting. <laughs> What do you mean? It's BJ Penn. He's you're nasty. just like this, like you know, like when you're when you're a kid, you're like, yeah, eh. and some like your brother's hitting <laughs> you, you go like up. <laughs> in the shoulder, you know, <laughs> like bro, it's like BJ Penn's be, like, insane. He was like, in the UFC, tighten up and then even like come in to like to take this versus like yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't do anything. I no, because what happens? What people don't know, they're gonna make fun of me in the comments. But I love everybody who's commenting. So and I love everybody who's watching this. But when you fight someone who's really good. 
Like, I, I grew up in these gyms around here in Orange County. That's how we all know each other. And I've trained with guys that are really good. The level of, it's not the level of, like, power. It's the level of efficiency. Like, I'm already tired within 30 seconds, and they haven't even thrown anything yet. Like, it's, they're just so efficient. They're not wasting punches. They're not running around, jumping mm-hmm. around, trying to look cool. They're, they're, you know, Sean Strickland, he's nasty, right? Philly Shell, Mayweather, just throws when he needs to. But when you fight guys in the gym and you've never fought, like, dude, unless you really know defense, you're going to get molly whopped. My, I got my wig split within 30 seconds with BJ Penn. The dude's a UFC champion. Mm-hmm. He was in the UFC. Yeah, but what yes. I'm saying, if you, but if you train, if you yes. go train with Kane for like six to eight Kane weeks. would destroy me. No, he's your coach. He's not going to be kicking your ass. So that, so that, that's all that is the difference is like somebody that, who, that committed their time to, to like learn this stuff. Yeah. Like in a lot of stuff you don't forget, you know, so when you yeah. go back out there, like, there's certain things there's to the fight game, like from everything, right? But the stand up, uh, especially, like there's laws or certain things that, that happen where you have to do certain things as soon as you see it. So you're always moving, like you're always circling, you're always moving. And if you, once you get, and it's a distance thing now, like when you get close to like punching range, you're doing, you're doing something. And you generally are doing, you know, three things you're either punching, you're moving out. Or or your 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 setting up your your, your takedown, mm-hmm. right? You that, that that's go time. It's like you're not waiting there. Like mm-hmm. You wait unless, unless you're counter punching. Yeah. So it's four things. So you're always doing something when you get there. Like so when you sit there and you wait, you're gonna get fucked up. Yeah. Or yeah. Or, or it's a good good chance that that you could. So it's like things like that. Like you learn in all these different positions that there's something that needs to be done, and how to do it correctly and to do that every time. That's that's what next level. When when someone walks into AKA nowadays, because you're there, and I'm, I'm sure like Khabib's not in there every day, DC's not in there, Luke's not in there every day. You're obviously you know the champion. It's still your gym, and everybody knows it's like Kane's gym. Do you see someone when they walk in and you go, "This guy's going to be a champion," or like how how are you picking your fighters mm-hmm. on who to spend time with? No, yes or no. Like you may see somebody that has, like I said before, like um. I hope that, that that everyone gets to do what they want to do in the space. Um, and, I'll, and I'll give you the time, regardless if you have, regardless of what, what you're bringing to the table. Now, yeah. That could be physical, that could be mental. Like, you could just love to, to be in here. Yeah. Um, this, I, I've, I've seen this throughout all, all my career of competing. This is from, like, junior high wrestling, high school, college, all the way, you know, to, to fighting. It's like, you never know who's going to, one day just blossom into something like great. Mm. You never know. Like, and it's in everybody to do it. Mm. And some guys, like I remember like in high school and college, it's like some guys who were the top dogs, I like, like got booted out, you know? And the other guys that you, that you were able to beat, like ended up like coming up and, and, and doing <laughs> it. So you never know who's going to make it. Like, obviously I hope every, everyone does like do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, you never know. You could be somebody who, who doesn't have any talent at all, but all of a sudden, like, they shit just comes together. Like, yeah. you bring it together, and they end up making something great out of it. Or even somebody that has, like, a lot of talent and really just doesn't amount, you know, doesn't reach what, what you thought they would reach. So, just, so you really don't know. Just give the time to everybody. Help them, you know, help them out, and hopefully that they, they you know, combine it together uh, themselves and, and with the people around them. Yeah. As a coach, I got one question for you. Mm-hmm. It's about nutrition. Um, I know somebody that's fighting and, he, and he's a vegan. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Do you think that's, um, do you think that's, mm-hmm. what do you feel about a vegan trying to be an MMA fighter? Fuck, if it works for him, like, cool. If it doesn't, then. Have you ever heard of working, for, have you heard of it working for anyone? I know, I know I... the Diaz brothers are, are vegans, though. They were, or, the, or they did. Or they dabbled in that a little bit. I, I don't know how. I don't know how much percentage of yeah. a vegan they they were doing their careers. Dude, uh, my son's a vegan, and he's trying okay. to be a fighter. And I've been trying okay. to talk him out of it. I give up trying to talk him out of it. But I just want your take on. Yeah. I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna show him whatever okay. you say. I'm gonna show it. To nah, him. dude. I, I don't like it. Work, like I'm. I know people who like do great stuff out, out, out of like fast food. You know. <laughs> Like, but they're still getting protein though, like that animal protein. Yeah. Lab manufactured. Yeah. Now it is. Yeah. So I don't know, like 
I have no idea. Yeah, like, right. I really don't. Like, you got to eat steak once if, a week. If it works, if it works for you, and maybe that's all. That's all the mental. Like, maybe you, yours, maybe what you think is best for you, and that's all you really and everyone like really that's all they need to make to to control this. Like, who knows, you know? But if they're like dead set on it and it's working for them, cool. But it all depends on how they feel. You well, know? I can I can say honestly. Doing his amateur career, it didn't seem to bother him. But okay. then he he dropped to fifty five, right? Yeah. And then, and he had, he he wanted to go pro, so he went pro, and he didn't prepare for his pro he didn't prepare for his pro fight, and he um he had to lose a lot of weight, and we had to get him down. He had to lose like thirty pounds in within like the last twenty days or something, yeah. and and I just can tell that and and he says it was a weight cut. He said it mm -hmm. wasn't him, um, you know, being a vegan. But I've yeah. cut a lot. I've cut a lot of weight. I've cut a lot of weight too before, and and I still I felt like crap, but I still like mm -hmm. had enough to to fight. Mm -hmm. He didn't have nothing in him. He almost knocked the guy out in the first round. Then after that, nothing. So what is he eating then? I think he just eat bird food or something. <laughs> I don't know what he's eat. <laughs> he eat a lot of greens. I be uh, saying yeah. a lot of he eat a lot of peanut butter. I see he eat a lot of greens, a lot of okay. seeds and plant based. Yeah, plant, yeah. Mm -hmm. he eat eggs though. I see him eat eggs. Okay, some protein out of there. Um... As long as he feels good, you know, like, and that's up to him, man. As long as, hey, it's like, we've, I think we've, we've grown up eating, you know, everything. And when we get to something where we're like, okay, I feel good with this. We're like, all right, that works for you, you know, like. So I'm just going to watch, I'm going to watch his next fight. So yeah. I'm going to tell him, I'll tell him like, look, well, we don't, well, we can't say it because he did have to lose a lot of mm -hmm. weight and he couldn't do his card cardio. Yeah. He just had to do stair masters twice a day and stuff. So he couldn't, his last 20 days okay. he, all he had to do is you no know, all he had to do was focus on cutting weight so yeah, he yeah. Can, so his next fight i'm gonna see how you do better it. prepared yeah. you can you can space it out more where you can do like yeah get the cardio in yeah, yeah. i'm gonna see you cut the weight when he has to yeah do all that stuff yeah yeah that that that, that i mean a lot of that it's like yeah you gotta be you know the, the timing you know like with who you're fighting you gotta like someone has to mimic that for your training and then you still gotta get the cardio cardio in somehow you know, and then when the time is right, like to weight cut, it can't be too much, can't be too little. Like it's got to be perfect enough where you give a little bit, but you don't give all. You know, like you don't give all of it, so so you can't fight the next day. So yeah, it has to be done. Yeah, good balance and like sometimes it's it's out of our hands when we have like a fight that's coming up. But yeah, he just right do, there. He didn't yeah. know what he had to do to get his weight down because he was fighting at one seventy. Then he wanted to. Drop yeah. to 55. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him one more chance. I'm going to make sure he get his weight down. Cause I didn't want to hold his hand. Yeah. I didn't give hold him his one hand. more chance. I'm going to give him one more give chance. Give him one more chance. And if he oh. fights and he looks and he looks like crap again and he got yeah. his weight, they did everything wrong. I'm like, it's the... It's the Everybody gets a second chance in life. Yeah. We, uh, before we let you go, Kane, I got I to gotta hear this story. So I got... Hmm. I know the world wants to hear it because everybody's been talking about it. So I'll just shoot you straight. I heard you and Chuck got stuck in the desert. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what, we did, man. What happened? <laughs> so uh, we were doing this race. It was, it's the, the, the Mint 400. Um, it's on Vegas. And we do it every now and then. Um, and then I heard that I would be driving in the car with Chuck. I'm like, cool. So each lap is like, uh, it's about 150 miles maybe or so, like in the desert. Like so, we were, so I've done it before, you know, and the first time I did it, man, it kind of fucked me up. It was like it was hardcore. Like it was How just, do you pee? <laughs> okay, so we had we had catheters, oh, right? Oh. We had a cath you just pee. Wait, does that go in your actual? It, no, so we have one that go like oh, over it. Oh, it's over. It's, it's like sticky oh. as fuck. So it goes over, and oh. you have a tube going all the way oh, down. Okay, and you okay. just go when you like. Right. So you just go in the car if you have to, you know, like the backsplash everywhere. You're just fucking being shaken up by the well. What we were in, we're in these buggies, so that they're like. Off-road buggies, they got a Subaru, like six cylinder in the back, uh, four cylinder in the back. And you're just fucking, it's like you're in a cut, like a shaking cup, you know, like a protein cup, and you're just being shaken in there. Like, that's what it feels like. And it's, you go as fast as, uh, like, how, how much you can take, how much your body can take, you know? So I find out that Chuck's going to ride with me, and I'm like, cool, okay. Like, I've done this before, like, we'll be okay, you know? Um... So I asked him if he gets like car sick or anything. He's like, nah. I'm like, all right, cool. All right, we'll do this. And then like, just tell me, hey man, for for driving and like you you're getting too fucked up and it hurts, you know, like your body hurts. Like, let me know and we'll we'll slow it down. But no, dude, he's good. Like, we did this shit. He hardly talked. I wasn't talking. I was focused. 
Um, and then we're driving and then we hit this, we hit this, like hit this hill and we're like sideways like this in the air. And like, I save it, right? We like land, boom, save it, fucking keep going. Um, then as we're, as we're going, like I hit the gas and the back ends just start swirling. Like, it's not like going straight it's doing this now. I'm like, okay, something, something's going on back there. But I can't really tell. It's just like we're, we're, we're just sands going everywhere. We're just fucking going. We're just flying. And then after a while, I start hitting the gas, and it's like nothing. There's nothing in the back that's pushing me. And I'm like, okay, so something's fucked up back there. I don't know what it is. Pull over, and not just the tire, but the tire's fucking off of one side. <laughs> tire's off, and the rim, half of the rim is like shaved off like this bitch. So we were going for a while with just one you didn't even know tire that. in the back. <laughs> nah, dude, it was just one tire, like half of the rim. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that's cool. Like, okay. And the, the, but the rim is now on the sand. It's on sand. I'm like, oh, okay, how am I going to fix this? I'm like, fuck, I got, I'm like, I got us in this mess. I got to get us out. Like, I'm not going to have Chuck, you know, like, I'm not going to have him do any work. Like, I got, I got us in. I got to get it out. Like, I got to do this shit. So looking around the car for like, even like a jack and like bullshit jacks and stuff. And like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is a race car. Did they have anything? They had like, yeah, just crappy ass jacks. Oh. Like. Crappy ass jacks. It's worn a bunch of sand. There's no like, okay, jack wooden block. Okay, make it work. No, no, just that kind of a shitty jack. I think I tried to jack the car like once or twice in one area. It didn't it didn't work? So I put it next to the rear tire, like like near the uh, the, the, the axle. So I was able to jack it up just a little bit because it just kind of kept like like sagging in. So I'm like, oh fuck. I can't jack it up like total. So let me, I found this rock and I just start digging. I'm like, well, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out as, as much as I need, like the wheels like this and the tire, right? I need to dig out as much as I need to like fit the a new one in. So I'm, I'm digging, digging, digging. And the jack's right here. And then this is the, the rim. So I'm digging all this here. So if I go any further there, the shit's going to fall. Oh, yeah. And I'm like praying and all that and stuff. And I'm like, just show me the way. You know, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm not going to stop. Like, I think this is how it has to be done. Like, boom. I just started digging out, dude. And it's probably there for like an hour or so. And like. It was hot as hell out there. It was, yeah, it was hot. It was like sun was going down. Um, my fucking arms were burning. But I was like, I have to do this, you know. I Like, I got to finish. <laughs> Um, was Chuck just sitting in the yeah, truck Chuck the whole time? Yeah, where's Chuck at? Dude, I was asking, like, we were, he, uh, he was helping me kind of like, uh, you know, like brainstorm, like, hey, man, what should we do? You know, I'm like, <laughs> hey, like, hey, man. and then he's like, oh, what about this? Like, oh, yeah, 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 no, we wanted to use that. Okay, yeah, yeah we use that. So, like, I'm like, I got to do this. <laughs> not that he won't help, but I'm like, man, he is, he's helping, but it's like, I'm not going to have Chuck, like, I would have helped. Try to help. Help. Get out. Get us out of there. I know, but it, I, I was like, I have to dig, so I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, right? you dig. <laughs> I have to like, no, fuck this. Like, no, I have to dig. I got us in this. Like, I'm not gonna have. Like, I just the way I think. Like, I'm like, not Chuck. I'm not gonna have you just dig. You know, <laughs> like, I'm doing this shit. I got us in, so I'm just doing this. And really, in that time, I don't know what he's doing. He's just like hanging out. He's like calling like the, <laughs> like the, the the other people or what. He's on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Kane digging, looking like Shia Buff and Hole Zero. <laughs> For a while. Finally, I like, I'm like, okay, this is enough. I take the the wheel, the wheel off, I get the new wheel and tire, and I put the bitch on, and it's like I can only get two lug nuts in. Cause it was like this still. I couldn't dig up anymore here because then the jack would fall, and like we're, we're back at square zero, right? So two lug nuts in. I'm like, okay, what if I get in the car? And I put it in first, and I just roll, roll, roll the tires, and maybe that shit would just pop in. Like I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so I tried that, and it did. And it all the like it all got lined up, put all the lugs in, boom, boom, tightened it up. I was gonna have Chuck drive, but since I got us out, I was like, fuck it, I'm finishing this shit. <laughs> like finish that up, man. Um, and then we were still in this fucking big old like. So there's no reverse in the car, so I like had to like 
put in first and rock it like with the with the clutch. So first, boom, clutch. Like do this until I until I got us out. Got it. as soon as I got us out, one of our team members finally comes up and was like, "Hey, you guys are good. You guys need help." And I was like, "No, nah, man, we're good. Like we did it." <laughs> were you two hours ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we did it. Like we finished the race, man. And it was that was like that was rewarding. Like that was rewarding. You know, like I was like, we could just be finished and just like let somebody come pick us up. We could do that. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. You know, we just could have just stopped. You know, but I was just like, I fucking just kept digging. And I, like, I, I found a way to get us out. And it barely worked, and it was perfect, bro. You know, bro, that's crazy. The whole time you were telling me, I'm like, I'm thinking, what was Chuck doing? Yeah, I was yeah. thinking you were thinking you over there making TikTok. <laughs> he's TikTok. like in the car chilling. He's like, get out. He's like walking around. Yeah, he said dude. Brainstorming. brainstorming. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, man, what? Like, because we were trying to find different stuff in the car, and it was, it was kind of bullshit stuff. Like, I was like, okay, like there should be like some different stuff in there if you do get in the wreck or or whatever. What was it? Two hours? You guys were stuck out there. Uh, it was probably an hour. Yeah, probably hour twenty, hour thirty minutes of just nonstop working, dude, uh-huh. the whole time. And finally, we did it. We finished the race, and I just felt so like, ah, uh, like, th- like, thank you for that. You know, like we did it. Like it wasn't like we didn't win or anything. You know, but we, <laughs> but we finished. We finished. finished yeah. We got out of what we needed to get out of. And it was just like, man, that was a good learned lesson. You know, like you just find a way. You make do what you have and you find a way to make it work. And it fucking, it was great. Yeah, we had a good time, you know. We got fucked up a little bit in the car, like just shaking up again and all that. But it was it was a good time. Was Chuck over there drinking beers and stuff while you were driving? <laughs> nah, he was, he was doing some TikTok. He was like killing <laughs> some stuff, you know. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I'm just, dude, I'm just trying to like, Pass people and you know be fast. Like, I'm just trying to be fast and not 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 hit too much stuff, not not kill us or anything out there. But be, you know, be on the, it's on not the like edge. Fun, it's not like fun. It is fun but and it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of work. You know, how did it you is. fuck up the rim by jumping it? I think jumping it and turning maybe sideways. I think maybe the tire maybe got loose or came off, or maybe we lost a lot of air from the tire, and then just. Whatever rocks and stuff we were hitting, man, it just started ripping everything off like nice. over time. Enough where it broke half of the rim off, like half of the rim was was all the way down. Like so, we were, were scraping. We must have been scraping like sparks and stuff well, flying. Like, even know yeah, this. yeah. People were like passing around. us up, and I'm sure they were like, "Oh god, like these guys are kind of <laughs> kind of going nuts over here." But but dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked. It all worked out, and that was yeah, man. It was fun. It sounded like fun. A lot of fun, a lot of work. Yes, yeah, but it was, yeah, yeah. All right, I tell you, I tell you what, man. It's been a pleasure having you here with us. Oh, we, thank you. We really appreciate it. I'm glad I get to got to know you more. I got even yeah. more respect for you. Oh, thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Yeah, it's glad, I'm glad to uh, see um, somebody with a, such a strong mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to teach that to my my son and everybody. That you got to get that mental toughness. Very mm-hmm. important. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rampage man. Uh, dude, always been a big fan of yours. Oh, you know, thanks. watching. I watch you. Um, you know, stuff in Japan growing up, like you're you're one of the you know the the pillars of what made this sport like what it is. Oh, you know, thanks, bro. You're, you're one of those important people that that people have to watch to like to get stuff from in order to do this. So I appreciate you, man. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, it's uh, and I think I speak for everyone, Kane. You know, your your mentality, your aura, your spirit. It's it's a blessing to be around, and I think as a a man and someone who lives by a code that, you know, you definitely inspire and, and the MMA community and the world's behind you and we're behind you and we love you and we appreciate you, especially for taking the time. It's been an honor to sit here with the world champion and Rampage always, uh, you know, making it happen. And I appreciate you. I think the the fans are going to really love this one and see see a good side of you. And I appreciate you doing this. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank means you a lot. Me. All right, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Uh, Kane Velasquez, man, he showed up and showed out, man. Had some great stories. Uh, let us know in the comments what y'all think and what y'all want to see next time. Once again, thank thanks to Bear for bringing us the, the best guests and taking care of everybody. Jackson, taking over the podcast space, baby. <laughs> <laughs>